62% of the birth certificates do not have the name of the father. Mm. Mm. Only 38%. That's where we probably should start, mindful of the fact that our families are broken. The aim at the end is to increase incomes of the nation, okay. of the persons in the nation. Yeah. Has it happened? It doesn't. So for the nation to survive, the tribe must die, must contribute. Must contribute. Uh, but uh, yes, your father might be rich, but here when you are in this institution, we are equal. Is, we are equal. King King David Studio Podcast. You know, I, I've invited you here for a number of reasons. And I remember when we were planning, I said, do I do a, a profiling exercise? Because I don't think we know you well enough mm. as South Africans, but I, I can't have you here and just do that. I'll be doing a huge disservice. Yeah. But I, I, I quickly want to spend a minute on, on the man, the person. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm privileged. I'll be very honest. I, I, we're recording this on a Sunday morning. Uh, I hope I didn't disturb your church, <laughs> your church program. <laughs> that the Lord. <laughs> uh, well, I was at church because we were having a funeral yesterday, so oh, I yes. had a, I had the blessings of the priests. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 you hit what? Two, what is it? What, uh, two bears with one stone yesterday. <laughs> yes. Nak nakali na kama shavela ke ke David ke topa na magi topa kholo diradi atile. My people are from kama uh, shavela site ya Gen Fest. Yeah. Uh -huh. Who is that the Lord? Eh, na eji mufugeni wa wa mamugari ya Paul. Eh, kumuzi su dikalo kadina leedi. Eh, ki sali soto. Ha bo kuna ge tabatu usi trofe mani. Eh, yuzi tabatu ubane juele na alse kwa le le sui. Bana ulu hole ki tabatu ma. Yeah. Eh, kio na moja tu anti. Sse we. Uh, my father was born. Mm. Uh, ironically, uh, when we were growing up, yes, we knew that uh, that was our home. Mm. But we have a, a home in Matuling, in Mafiteng, where my father built a house. Okay. But we grew up at a mission house mm. where he was teaching. And ah. that became home. And I didn't know that we had a house in Matuleng. <laughs> uh, is Matuleng rural in, in its No, in its it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's in Mafiteng. It's oh, closer. It's, 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 it's Semi-urban. Semi more, yes. more urbanized than Hermon. Hermon mm. is a, a, a fantastic uh, mm. place. I mean, uh, we were born six in my family. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, three brothers and uh, three sisters. Where are you in the pecking order? I am last in Whoa. that. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm last. Uh, so... <laughs> And then when we were convening uh, over the weekend, uh, mm. my niece and nephew were having something. And uh, all six of us uh, rose and said, well, we are still here. <laughs> all six of you <laughs> yes, are still yeah. strong. Uh, my eldest brother was uh, he's an Edinburgh uh, trained uh, lawyer. Uh, he, he, he ended up uh, retired mm. as a chief justice in the Sutu and then went on to head uh, the electoral commission as he okay. retired out of, uh, yes, yes. Yes, out of uh, being a chief justice. Is he still active? No, he's not uh, yeah. active now. He's retired. Completely now. He could ease. Yeah, he could ease. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's retired. But I think uh, he, he needs to, <laughs> to, to, to give what he's been doing. One of the things that he did yeah. uh, was as a chief justice, I mean, um, people get arrested, uh, incarcerated. Uh, as a register of the high court, you see the person when he's going to hang. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. He, uh, and then uh, when uh, he, he retired as a judge, he, he actually brought the, 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 the those who were incarcerated mm. Uh, annually to his place to discuss with them. What? Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the the, the, the goal? Uh, the goal is that uh, once you have left that place, you are supposed to have uh, been correct and rehabilitated. Yes. And you need to support that process of rehabilitation. Okay. And uh, the best way of doing this is to meet mm. who, with who was the chief justice doing that and then the constables and, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the the prison warders and himself, uh, yeah. and he would uh, hold uh, these conversations with them. Oh. Um, and my second brother is an Oxford trained uh, mathematician. Uh, he, he was a uh, uh, deputy prime minister of Lesotho. He, he retired. As well, uh, of yes, course. Yeah, yes. he retired. Yeah. 
Then I have uh, uh, three sisters. Uh, uh, the one is a uh, Bristol trained a mathematician. As well. Yes, and the other one was uh, trained in the U.S. A mathematician, and the other one sure. educator from a uh, university. Well, there's uh, a lot of numbers in the in the uh, household. Uh, yes, I mean, <laughs> my father and mother were teachers. Yes, uh, and uh, they they really uh, ensured that uh, we we value education. I mean, mm -hmm. my father. Uh, was due for a transfer with a promotion to mm -hmm. another school. Okay. And um, and we were, my brother were were young. My mm -hmm. brothers were young, uh, and uh, he, he refused the promotion because he said I can't leave his children mm. uh, when they are young because he needed to. Because what Lorelo called me, so so losing that opportunity mm. for him. We don't know the mm. results of the children. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you know, he, he usually said, you know, a teacher is like a, a stepping, it's a stepping stone where yeah. people, it's a step on the on the on the on the ray, ray, array of stairs. Yes. And uh, so you, you see, the people brush their feet on you, mm. and uh, mm -hmm. the more uh, uh, degraded the, the the stepping stone is, yeah. the more glory. Uh, he has in what That's, he's done. <laughs> do, we, do we still see teaching as a profession in that light? I don't know how else we can mm -hmm. not see it in that light. I mean, uh, we have we are seeing it differently. We want to see it differently, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in South Africa, because the culture of teaching has degenerated so badly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, teachers who are basically social workers, they are everything. That's it. Uh, to us, yeah. particularly in our South Africa, uh, that uh, the the children come from broken families. That's true. And uh, in that respect, the teacher is everything. So there is a level of modesty that we as society should have mm. and empathy uh, to teachers because they, we have entrusted our children to them. Mm. Yes, yeah, so... Um, and... I don't see that empathy towards teachers. Teachers, yeah. yes. But how how would we we demonstrate that that empathy? And you're speaking to someone who has been involved in uh, teaching awards mm. as, uh, together with the Department of of Education many years ago. Mm. I I got to see teachers much closer mm. because once you leave the the, the traditional uh, uh, junior schooling system. You go to university, you almost never get to associate mm -hmm. again with the teaching, with teachers. And I got to see them much closer and you got to see them being appreciated. And you realize that, wow, we, we think we've, we've actually forget this role as a key role in society. But how else would we demonstrate this as a society? This appreciation? Uh, well, I, I suppose uh, there the, the are difficulties. I mean, uh, um. There are difficulties. Uh, the, the teachers are broken themselves as well. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, they do things with children at school and yeah. uh, this thing doesn't work well. Mm -hmm. But they're a reflection of society. Um, but uh, that's where we probably should start, mindful of the fact that our families are broken. Mm. I mean, if you look at the South African statistics here again, uh, and this is something that uh, people in policy don't want to appreciate and understand. 62% mm. uh, of birth certificates do not have, of children born every year, a million, two of them, mm. 1.2 million of them, born every year. 62% of the birth certificates do not have the name of the father. Mm. Mm. Only 38%. So you can see the, the kind of problem that we have. Yeah. That means the responsibility towards children is not a joint responsibility of the people who produce them. No. It's the responsibility of the mother. Now, our policies, I mean, when you look at uh, the vets, fees must fall, mm -hmm. uh, you realize that uh, the policy makers don't understand the phenomena they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And that moves into you know, the perpetual gender-based violence yes, uh, and uh, child abuse. Mm. All those things are related to the bedroom, mm. the point of, of con how of, the children of conception. Were conception. Yes. And we, we haven't tackled that issue mm. head on mm -mm. to understand it and to understand that it has to be dealt with 
you cannot come and say, and in fact, it's unconstitutional and illegal mm. to imagine children having to pay school fees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they haven't worked. Of course. They have to be free to get to, to school. They have to be free to get, and they must acquire those things mm. uh, for free. And then that means we have to be taxed. I, I mean, I, I keep rabbits. <laughs> yes. And uh, you, you'll, you, you, you'll know my my column. When I retired, I, I kept rabbits. I have hands. I have all this. And it's, it's very important because having grown with animals, you, mm. you, you, you look at the behavior. The rabbits... Um, before it gives, when it, it is pregnant and they're about to give birth, mm. it has to get fair. Okay. Yes. To lay for the young ones. Oh, almost similar to what a, what do you mean fair? Almost similar to what a bed would do. Yeah, we do. It, yes. it builds a nest. It builds a nest, yes. yeah. When it is about left with about four or five days, it has to get this fair and lay the nest. Wow. Okay. Uh, it starts with its own around the neck. Takes, takes it, it off, yeah, takes and, it off and, and puts, it, puts it there. Whoa. But that is not enough. It has to it has to be donations from the rest of the tribe. Wow. So it goes and pulls fair, and uh, <laughs> I mean the teeth are so sharp, it goes and it pulls the fair, pulls all over. Is there willingness amongst other members of the no, tribe? Not necessarily. Yes. Yes, the males, yes, do something. Okay. Yeah, they do. But the the the, the mother one goes and pulls the fair from everybody. Wow. So for the nation to survive, the tribe must die, must contribute. Must contribute. Now, my argument is this, that uh, for the young children that we have given birth to, uh. that are the future resources sources of human, re human capital, we got to tear, pull our fair and contribute. Mm. To them, all of them, not... Uh, those who can afford and not those who can not afford. Because when you build a nation, you want a nation that is based on equity principles. True. Uh, that, uh, yes, your father might be rich, but here when you are in this institution, we are equal. Is, we are equal. Yeah. We are students. The student issues are the student issues. Mm. Now, once you separate people in that way, then they will go and create, those who are rich will go and create their own institutions. Which is what what continues to happen in most in other societies, South Africa being one of them. It is that's what is happening in South Africa, yeah. and we cannot solve the inequality problem. We cannot think or exhort a mm. uh, social compact. The president wants social compact. The social compact yeah. starts there at the university, where you pay for everyone, mm. uh, regardless, and then you tax everybody in order to contribute to that to process. This pro yeah, and then put in place social compact systems uh, mm. so that every year students can write about what South Africa they wish for. These are people who will be elites. Mm. <laughs> uh, so if they can't define that jointly, then, a, then don't a problem. expect a, a united South Africa. Jeez. I want to go back to, to oh. home. To home. Because home is, when I base stories on people's homes, there's a lot that comes out mm. of it. A, a, a parents and and did, was there ever a moment where there was a movement from family your family to some part of of Lesotho to another? No, no, no. We grew up at that place and stayed there and stayed there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the only time we moved was when we had to go to university uh -huh. and then move uh, to uh, other places. Yeah. But my father finally moved from where we were born and bred. All of, uh -huh. all six of us. To his house in in Matule. Okay. Uh, oh, the, the the main house. The main house yes. where he had, <laughs> and uh, that's that's where he's buried in the yard. Ah. Uh, so uh, that's that's really the, the 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 only movement move he made uh, yes. from his job after teaching for forty five years. Is it still family house that? Uh, yes. When you say there. we are high, that's where you that's go. That's where we go. Yes, that's where we go. <laughs> is yes. is there someone left there now? There's someone who is staying there taking yeah. care of the of the of the of the of the, of the house. Yeah. And of course the graves and the the the, the, the uh, well my brother's second brother mm. uh stays in that okay. community. Ah, okay. So he's he's keeping continues yeah. to keep an eye although there's somebody yeah. Uh, staying there. Is it? Uh, is it? Do you do you make a regular visit to to that part of the world? Uh, yes, I was there last week. Wow, that regular. Uh, yes, <laughs> I was there last week, uh, and um, 
yeah, we had a, a, a family gathering. Which was quite okay, nice. Okay, where you said yes, the, all, all six, all were, six there. All, all were there. And, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, for my nephew and uh, uh, niece mm. that uh, they made uh, something in Maseru. So okay. we were all there. Wow. Mm. And, and, and <laughs> why was there such an insistence on what seems like international education? Because you spoke of, of Cambridge and all of that among some of your of your siblings. Well, I, the all of us, or rather, not not me, not say all of us. Four of us mm. started at the University of Lesotho before we could go and study outside. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the other two actually went outside right immediately, uh, immediately mm. uh, to go and study. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that's that's that's. Was it intentional, but from from daddy's side to say, I need my kids to to have a different form of education? Uh, well, uh, he, he left choices to us. Okay. Uh, he always said, uh, it's your choice. Mm. You'll make choices. Uh, but uh, this is the school. You have to go to school. I mean, it was routine for everybody to go you to school. You didn't have a choice you about school. About schooling, <laughs> yes. You didn't have a choice about schooling. Yes. But uh, you had choice to choose. A yes. choice around what you might want to do. Mm. He never said you will be this or you'll be that. Wow. I mean, uh, that he left entirely mm. to every one of us. We, we chose our paths. Seems uh, like mathematics <laughs> was part of the system, though, somehow in the in the house. Why? Why? It seems like it when you say so. At least more than two or three of you are mm -hmm. went in that direction somehow. Uh, all, uh, five. 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 Went into oh, no, only no, four, four, four of us. Yes. yes. Went and then there's direction. a lawyer. Then there's a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, he he just didn't like uh, medicine. Yeah. Oh. So he thought uh, law will be better. Yes. yes so he <laughs> so he went that route. Why yeah. the Why the numbers in the in the family? Do you know? Can you trace? The roots of the interest in numbers somewhere, somehow. I'm not very sure what actually influenced us yeah. all in that uh, direction. Uh, I suppose, I mean, you had to do arithmetic at, and, school. Uh, at school and do it well. Mm. Uh, and uh, that that was uh, the basis. And then, of course, um, you can choose whether you want to do BSc or do what. I mean, I wanted to do geology, mm. uh, but there was no geology in the Soto and then someone said sociology. I mean, there were these second year students. Yeah. Said, well, you want to do, can you do sociology? Uh, they all laughed. <laughs> Why? Is and that? I said, uh, oh, these guys are laughing. I can't do that thing. But they're laughing at <laughs> So, uh, and then I, they said statistics. I said, ah, that sounds like something I can do. Yeah. So I combined statistics and uh, economics. But later I had to do sociology. I saw that uh, in order to, make people understand statistics. You have to understand sociology. Society. Yes, sociology yes. into this. So uh, I, I regretted why I didn't do sociology. From the I beginning. Did, from the beginning, I did it much later. Yeah. You know, something interesting uh, that we probably don't know. Uh, Fervurz was a sociologist. Oh, yeah. A master sociologist. That's why he was able to design an entire country. With, because, because to design yeah. society... You have to know how to how to break it down, and because mm. you know, when I read his story, I said this is incredible. How ultimately his true training mm. was a makeup of society. Oh yes, and uh, <laughs> he had a, a deep understanding of that, yeah. and uh, he understood how social engineering yes. can generate a particular so society. And he he was a visionary mm. of note. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, he said these guys in order to make them say slaves forever, don't teach them mathematics. In 1953, mm. uh, when he was the minister of uh, education, yeah. Bantu education, uh, after 1948, uh, apartheid declaration, he said, uh, the Bantu, uh, 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 what's the use of teaching Bantu child mathematics mm. when it can't use it in practice? Mm. And then post that, there was no there was no teaching of teachers that could teach mathematics in South <laughs> Africa. So imagine yeah, that. So what we see now is a product of that decision that wow. was made, and it's self perpetuating. It and now doesn't we have, stop. We have, we, have, we have fallen into the trap of mass literacy. Huh. Uh, a decision to, that was made yeah, seventy made by, years ago. 70, now uh, the the democratic government says no, we'll have to teach mass mass literacy. 
What has happened in this bloody mass literacy? I dare say my apologies for saying bloody. <laughs> Is because even children who could do mathematics have mm -hmm. moved into math literacy. Why? Because the targets are now the things that are chased, not mm -hmm. the reason for the creation of targets. Yeah. So schools, the teacher, the president, the minister, the parents, the children all want to have a, a little certificate by December 27th when the results come out. Mm -hmm. And they're mostly as literacy is easier, they can pass. Yeah. Now, they all drift there. Huh. And very few people do maths. Um, I mean, I'm not against maths literacy yeah. uh, as such because it explains why mathematics is important. Mm. And uh, it shows some bit of applications. Yeah. But for heaven's sake, all children must do mathematics. Mm. And probably all children must do math literacy. That's it. Not to say now there are two streams. No, mm. they must do all those. Let them fail, but having a try. Let's get it right eventually. Let's get it right, yeah. yes, yeah. So let's not have this kind of thing of uh, the softer route, the backdoor route. It, it, it's, it's the softer <laughs> route, as you, as you put it, done to, to get the numbers out. I agree we have a, a target. Mm. Yes. We have this this big announcement of metric, metric uh, bargain pass rate. Pass rate, yeah. We have all these numbers that mm. we have to achieve. Mm. And we happen to have the highest we've ever achieved right now. So you're saying it's a, it's a zero celebration if the content uh, is, uh, it, it, is it, light. It, it, it's, it's a theoric. It's a theoric. Uh, it, it's theoric at two levels. Yeah. At the one level, there are 1.2 million children born in the country mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. Some die naturally, yeah. before they reach writing metric. Mm. But of the 1.2 million that are born, minus those that uh, die, only 500,000 or 600,000 will actually go and write metric. Yes. What has happened to this uh, other... 700,000, give, yeah, yes. give or take. Yeah, give or take. Now, the real pass rate of metric is the denominator should be those who were born entitled to basic education. Mm. Not this false thing of uh, saying uh, of those that wrote, this is the percentage. Yes, you can raise that percentage and say of those that wrote, this is the number. Yeah. But the actual number that the president should be worried about, the minister of education should be worried about, mm. is the constitutional responsibility that says at least everybody in South Africa must achieve basic education. Yeah, That's where they, they answer. Mm. And therefore, the pass rate of metric, which is 250,000 of the 1.2 million born, mm. is that percentage which is uh, uh, less than 25%. Uh, because I know there's a, a, a discussion that always comes up mm. and says, those who started sub A mm. in, in our world, uh, what is it now? Great, 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 great one. Yeah. Great one this year, 12 years later, that entire group mm. must be passing Metric. Metric, yes. And I, when, when we say that entire group, it means 100% of that group must pass. Mm. So that means the process went smoothly from day one to the very end. And and as a society must stop, must must get to a point where it doesn't lose people while the bus is moving. Yeah. And that's where the real, the that, real that's measurement... Where the real, that's where the real measurement is. And therefore, the policy design mm. should be articulating those outcomes. Yeah. And uh, the measurement and the contract that was signed with the Minister of Education is that one. That was signed with the Minister of Health. It's, this child should reach that. I mean, Monique Sh uh, Shafiq, mm. Monique Shafiq, uh, the Baroness uh, Monique Shafiq, in her book, mm. What We Owe Each Other, writes an important point around what are the investments that are made at different points in the demography of the nation. Mm -hmm. When you are born, education helps, but education takes the, 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 the big share. Yeah. Which is the case in South Africa. 22% of our budget goes to education. Yes. But the outcomes are not seen. It's clearly and, uh, not a money problem. It's not a money problem. Mm. It's a, an infrastructure problem. It's this 60% of birth certificates that do not have fathers. In them. Oh. That's where the problem is. Yeah. And until we have understood that huh. as men, that uh, we are the greatest cause of this dissonance mm. uh, in, in society, we are not never going to get this right.
can a man and allow me to play devil's advocate mm. here and defend the man? Mm. It's not easy. I'll try. This man is saying this. This is the story that is part of my life too. Mm. I'm born of the same circumstances. Mm -hmm. I know no better. This is how I'm designed. How do you expect me all of a sudden to just change? And yet no one is saying anything about my change. No one is asking me as a man, are you well? Mm. Is everything okay? And, and there's more and more voices that are saying, we need to look after the women. We need to promote the women. We need to give them opportunity. No one is doing much about me. I am, what you're seeing is me playing out my frustration. What oh, are you yeah, saying yeah. to that man? Oh, well, look, uh, when we were growing up, uh, we used to have donkeys. Mm. Uh, and then of calves. And then uh, when we graduated to be about seven, eight years, yeah. uh, we headed cattle. Okay. Now, donkeys and, uh, you know, this thing was very interesting. We used to have this donkey. Mm. Uh, it would get uh, pregnant. And then it, when it is supposed to give birth to a cult, mm. the cult is dead. Yeah, Yet it has reached... A maturity. Mm. I mean, uh, you mm. know, it's, 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 um, now, donkeys uh, go on heat in, December, in, in September and mm. then they give birth in winter. Okay, you know? okay. Now that's when you fresh sorghum. Mm. And what we knew is that any sorghum ingested, sorghum, um, sorghum, um, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's the, 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 it's the, the maize. droppings. Yes. yes. Oh, the, the droppings. The, dro the droppings. The, yeah. the, 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 the chaff from mm, sorghum. From, yeah. Uh, causes abortion. Okay. In cattle and uh, and uh, in in animals. Okay. So you 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 don't give pregnant animals sorghum. Wow. Chaff. Yes. Uh. Yeah. So we thought that perhaps this donkey has been eating chaff uh -huh. because that was the period. But we also knew that it's not so. Uh -uh. So uh, now. What is the problem? I'm trying to answer the question. No, of, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'm aware. Mode. I'm aware. Now, one day, mm. after three abortions or three stillbirths mm. of full time, hmm. this thing is full time, but it's very unusual. It's, it's unusual. So we saw this thing giving birth during the day. Okay. We were there watching. Like uh, we would watch cattle and so on. Mm. Ah! Suddenly, there was this, you know, yeah. donkey that galloped, held the colt by the neck, mm. shook it and tried to kill it. We were there to save it. Ah. Then we knew where the culprit is. And this culprit was so tame, we never chained it. Oh. In the crawl. Mm. So it has the freedom of the... Mm, of the crawl, the crawl, crawl. So, we now go and share this news. I mean, it's, it spreads like fire <laughs> in the village. That's the only talk of the town, you know. So, so the other guys... Yeah, trend. In the, in the same village. Yes, it trends. <laughs> Just like that. The other guys in the other, on the other side of the village, they say, ah, that happens with that other donkey. They have a similar... A similar problem. Ooh. Now, the question was, what is this experimental design in these donkeys? Both of them had been castrated before they could sire. Okay. The donkeys that we had castrated after siring never had those behaviors. Mm, mm. So this victimhood, inherent victimhood of not getting mm. your, your, your progeny, it's so embedded in human beings, in or, or animal, in animals, animal, animal, in animal societies. Is, yes. Is. So you are right. Unless we correct that, yeah, uh, we are not going to go anywhere. So the, the correct, essentially, what you're saying is, unless we we pause for a second and equally look at the man, at the man, yes, yes, and we say, go to say, man, look, where is your pain? I mean, you have been taken to the mines. Mm. Without your wife, and then you come back, you find that hey, things have happened. Yeah, mm. I mean, in South Africa, it's very interesting that uh, um, if you look at uh, the number of children born per woman, mm. dropped drastically, uh, and 
And when we ran the surveys, we found that, oh no, the use of uh, injectables is very prominent. What is it to, 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 to stop, to, uh, to, to control, stop, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, they don't use, uh, the, 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 not the pills that much, but uh, the injectables. And okay. the injectables are convenient but they are also away from the eye of the mother-in-law. Uh, so nobody sees <laughs> nobody them. Nobody sees them. Yeah. Because then if the husband is on the mind, why do you want to use this uh, thing of yours? Now? Uh, so life goes on. So you're saying these numbers have been like this for quite a while. These numbers have been like this for quite a while, but the problem that our policymakers, our politicians, uh, they don't delve into the meaning yeah. of these numbers. Hey. <laughs> and understand that they are driving the sociology in very, very specific ways. Mm. I mean, I was looking at uh, Rashad Kasim's report that uh, now population growth is higher than uh, economic growth, mm -hmm. which is true. It's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with such an articulation left unanswered and left unquestioned is that people end up saying, Maybe we should reduce the the, the number of children. Birth or, rate. Yeah, birth rate. And yeah. I said, no, no, no. The performance of the economy is the problem, not the birth not rate the, of the not problem. the people. They're not the people. Mm. <laughs> and that that is entering the lexicon of South Africa. I've seen it in writings by the National Planning Commission. I've seen it in the documents of government. And I'm saying this is how neoliberal ideology infiltrates infiltrates the yeah. system. Yeah. And uh, we got to nip it in the bud. Huh. <laughs> because then you start blaming the people for falling pregnant and having children. And, uh, you know. Uh. And, but that, that narrative has been on for a while that says mm. we are making too many, too many children and, and yet we can't afford to raise them. That narrative has been there. That, for, that, that for narrative has been there. Yes. Obviously, a young mother uh, who doesn't have the means cannot... Uh, or a young yeah, man cannot. Mm. But it is not the problem of the young people mm. who are building the nation. It is the problem of the politicians and the designs of policy yeah. that are undermining the natural human, pro -human <laughs> yeah, endeavor. Yes, exactly. So suddenly you want to impose a, a nonsensical system, including allegations or assertions that... Uh, Young women uh, make children so that they can uh, get uh, grants. Yeah. I mean, all these nonsensical things can only exist in a mad society. Yeah, the, chi <laughs> the Chinese uh, had a similar policy uh, where they insisted on one child per, per family, and some could say it worked, and some are saying no, it didn't. And it's we're seeing the results of it now. Where <laughs> it didn't work so well. What is what is your take on that in relation to what you just said about, oh, about uh, controlling population? I have a longer story around the Chinese. Yeah. Um and I I, I, I want to to come to it from my practical experience with okay. the Chinese, not uh, in making children, but mm, uh, mm. Uh, yes, in making children, but not with my involvement. Yeah. <laughs> um you know, in 2012, I was invited to Mangawun to go and present the results of the census of 2011. Okay. So I was there. The ANC was dressed in my yellow suit and I branded him very nicely <laughs> with the yes. uh, gold and the... Uh, and, 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 oh, you uh, played with the colors. Uh, well, I, I used to play <laughs> dress in yellow, so I was still in that, that yellow driving there. The, yeah. So uh, the green and the black and the, the yellow was uh, yeah. very... I mean, 7,000 people there. I mean, Bushir wouldn't have beaten me to an audience. <laughs> <laughs> you could have converted so many souls. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and the, 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 the adulations and congratulations were absolutely amazing. My yeah. leader, my leader, you know, leader, yes. now, you know, <laughs> kind of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> so, I present these results. Mm. And uh, uh, to these people, and then that's it. Uh, Comrade statistician general, it's okay. Thank you. Then I go to China, yeah. where I was invited with another 10 people okay. from outside China. Yeah. When you got there, there are scientists here. Mm. Statistics office, scientists, everybody's there. And the question that we have to answer for in a week is how does the demography of China 
or rather, how does the economy of China impact the demography of China? Of course. In the light of 2010 census mm -hmm. results. So they use the 2010 census results to interpret to, to interpret the implications of the economy Essentially of China. To, is to model. Yes. Yeah. To look into the future. Of course. Now, well, I'll come to the modeling part. I mean, you've just uh, put the word. <laughs> I, 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 it just beats my mind that uh, we cannot, we don't have a modeling process in South Africa yeah. or any model. of. It's, 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 it's there in my questions. Yes, we'll get yeah. to it. So, <laughs> now, 60 years before, mm -hmm. China had asked, what are the implications of the demography of China on its economy? Mm -hmm. That's when they decided on a one-child policy. Okay. They constrained the bedroom. Now, at the end of that discussion, mm -hmm. there were three resolutions. At the end of that five, six days, three mm -hmm. resolutions. One, they're going to relax the bedroom. <laughs> Two children per, per family. Okay. Yes. Two, the, and that, the implication of that is the Chinese population will not grow beyond 1.4 billion, mm -hmm. or if it does, very marginally. But what will happen is the structure of the population will change. Okay. So a child born today who will live 90 years, mm -hmm. for 90 years, will be available, and uh, the structure changes into a box. Yeah. Because now it was becoming a little bit narrow at the bottom, and... Mm -hmm. big at the top, and it was going to create problems of course. Uh, for uh, renewal and uh, growth and everything of the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, the population would be poor yes. if uh, they don't have a... Yeah. So now the population will be more like a box. Mm. Uh, slightly bigger. Yeah, slightly, yes, marginally. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the young becoming a bigger proportion, but progressing through the ages. Mm -hmm. So the replacement of each generation is replaced by the same number. Equally. Equally. Yeah. And then it sustains mm. the, the so, economic growth of yes. the country, essentially. So that's the one. So the for that for that young population coming in, then you need to have firms mm. for making sure that consumption is by the domestic. Of course. You grow through domestic consumption. Mm. Uh, and because these people will live up to 90 years, mm. you are growing through domestic consumption for 90 years. Mm -hmm. The third was they will continue being an exporter. Mm. Yes. So these three ideas were placed mm. uh, at the Politburo and adopted two children per family. Yeah. The two children, the relaxing of the bedroom has not worked that well. <laughs> so they've gone to three children. Okay. For the same purpose. And I think uh, they'll put a lot of incentives like mm. uh, for mothers uh, to work fewer hours so that uh, they can take care of children. Yes. So yeah. you find the first six years, I know there are countries where the first, actually when a mother is pregnant, uh, the state takes over, over the, the, the costs. The, the, the responsibility. Yes, entirely. Yes. Mm. Even after they give birth, mm -hmm. the, 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 the state takes over. We don't have that. We don't we have, can't that, have yeah. that. Yeah. So now the Chinese... Well, we can have it because we can afford it. Mm -hmm. uh, we certainly can afford it if we change our policies. Yeah. So, now, there is a related story to this one. Yeah. And because I was in both stories, I could connect the dots. Mm. And then I could interpret what was happening in the trade wars by Trump in 2017. Okay, okay. Now, I was a, a, a member of the board of the International Comparisons Program, mm. the World Bank. Uh, International Comparisons Program is a, a global activity by statistics offices, okay. which look at um, what do people consume, mm. uh, and um, what 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 are the you measure the economics of the countries, mm. product for product. Okay. So we may not eat dog here mm. in China; they eat dog. But what is an equivalent of dog? In, yeah, in yes. South Africa. Find it's a kettle. Find it's a yes, kettle. Uh, and pound for pound, mm. how much would it cost yeah. for the same similar uh, product or equivalent product? And then out of that, you build your gross domestic product. Mm. What is the national mm. output based on that kind of thing? So I'm sitting at home between New Year and Christmas. Mm. I get the minutes from the director of uh, of uh, this program, mm. who is based at the World Bank. Mm. So I read the report, I mean, 
say, well, now that it is here, let me read. Yes. I come across a, a suggestion by Angus Deaton, Angus Deaton, the Nobel, mm. was uh, the, the, the head of um, the advisory group, yeah. the tech, technical advisory group, recommending that we must expel China from the program. Yeah, because China doesn't want to accept the results of this program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I call Michel, I say, Michel, he was a black guy mm. from uh, Congo, Brazza. Yeah. Uh, when he was appointed to this, I said, you know what, in South Africa, Michel, we have a saying that black man, you are on your own. <laughs> yes. Little did you know that he would be on his own. So I said, Michel, now you are on your own. Mm. You can imagine how you expel China from a statistical community. Yeah. This thing is not going to work, man. <laughs> have you read the minutes? He said, yes, I've read them. But that's what the tag is recommending. So he said, well, man, look. So I called Minister Manuel. I said, Minister, there is this problem. Mm. We have to convene in January. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to my colleagues that we convene. Because China cannot be expelled. Mm. Not because they can't be expelled. But I think we are misdiagnosing what the issues are here. Mm. So I need to be in Paris uh, in January, the second week of January. So the meeting was convened. Okay. And China came. Yeah. These guys just fired and said, we don't accept these results. <laughs> what was their issue? China had become the biggest economy in the world. Oh. Based on the purchasing power parity. <laughs> and they were not going to accept that. Or because, we can't have these guys in the room. They said we can't accept being the biggest economy in the world. It has responsibilities. <laughs> and it also <laughs> makes that uh, the, the benefits that you get on trade. And, uh, ah. and, uh, so they didn't, they didn't want to be number one. No. In South Africa. <laughs> or to be known as number one. No, yes. In South Africa, we were so sad that Nigeria had surpassed us. Mm. And they were mourning. Well, yeah. Well, yes, I, uh, I, I, I was a little sad. Yes. <laughs> I'll admit so, it. Now, the Chinese were not going to take that responsibility. Mm. And the guys, as they said, they, 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 they tackled the technical issues. Yeah. And they had no leg to stand on on those technical issues. But you are number one. You are number one guy. Then, what, what, uh, what are the res responsibilities? And, and, and pardon my interjection, what are the responsibilities that come with being a leader in that context? Well... Uh, there are when you are a, a, a developing world, mm. you get uh, substantial benefits, okay. uh, such as assistance and so on. Okay. Trade, you can negotiate trade differently, and uh, mm. um, I mean all those things come mm, with mm, this. Uh, mm. This being not number one, but when you are number one, you are responsible for <laughs> subsidizing to help other, the, the others. Yeah. And those, so China was not going to take. <laughs> the important thing was. Uh, China had a plan uh -huh. and this was going to disrupt their long-term plan. Yeah. So uh, from time to time, uh, Mr. Uh, Wu would, 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 would do the answer. Uh, I mean, they, they didn't bring their, their, their top guy uh -huh. from the statistics office. They brought a uh, second so that they could deal with oh, okay. uh, yes, yes. Uh, any fallout. Uh -huh. uh, so at the end of the meeting, he pulls the envelope, reads it. And Mr. Ma gave me this. Mr. Ma was the head of statistics. And he gave me this and he reads this. That we are not accepting the results. <laughs> After all the runs that showed that these results are the results. Yeah. Uh, the issue was, the, was not about the technical issue. It was about adaptive. Yes. And I told my team that... Uh, I was, I'm sure China doesn't have a problem with the results. Mm -mm. The technical issues, yes, they want to use the technical issues, but there's an adaptive issue that we have to deal with here. Yeah. And that we need to negotiate that adaptive process. Then I gave uh, Minister Manuel back uh, information that, no, we need to deal with this adaptive mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. change issue. Yeah. Now, in a lecture by a high-ranking Chinese mm -hmm. official at uh, the government, national government, school of South Africa. He affirmed that China was already a, the biggest economy in 2014. <laughs> they knew that. They knew that. Yeah. I mean, he, he was here a few years in 2022 and said, no, we have been the biggest economy. <laughs> so 
what was interesting about that was that uh, they were hoping that they would achieve the biggest economy by 2017. Okay. Which they, and they achieved it three years earlier. Earlier, yeah. By 2017, they would have estimated that America will begin the trade wars. Okay. And if they start the trade wars, they have a buffer of these children that were the relaxation of the bedroom ah, to two. Now they are... And then they can consume whatever they produce. They wouldn't need any external market mm. for themselves. So China had resolved hmm. the American problems long, long before, before Trump came in. If we were to use the, the chi Chinese scenario to a household where the, the child that has performed the best amongst siblings mm. financially is saying, I don't want them to know because if they do, they're going to bother me. And I have my own life plans. Yeah. Is, that, is that what it means, essentially? Or I want to carry on with my life plans without having to help others. No, no, I don't think they don't want to help others. Yeah. But uh, they, they know the consequences of being the first okay. from, a de from the demands that the Chinese would put on the government. That's it, yeah. And that was the problem. <laughs> Not even about helping. No. It, was, it was more about domestic what, issues. Domestic issues. Yes. The Chinese will yeah. demand highest wages. I mean, who would say, first, Chinese, the biggest. No, they want, we want more money. We want more money. We want all this. We want all this. <laughs> and then it disrupts yeah. the path that they had set to eliminate poverty in China by 2020, yeah. which they achieved. They were left with about 5 million people uh, <laughs> to remove out of poverty. And, and they're talking about hundreds, hundred, more than 100 million people. Oh, 1.4 billion people. <laughs> and then they move uh, 400, <laughs> million, so out, 400 million out of that poverty. Imagine that. That was the plan of China, and it has achieved that. Here's, here's a, a, mm. something that it brings me to that word, that dreaded word called modeling. Mm. That is the, the life you live. Your life is about mm. scenario planning. Your life is about let's let's open the cupboard, find out how much sugar we have, and then mm. know how to plan. And now, with knowing how much sugar we have, we say from now on it's one spoon every 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 cup. Mm. You're no longer taking as you want. That is ultimately scenario planning. We have documents in this country, lots. <laughs> we have them every second year, every third year of all sorts that are planning and hoping to achieve a better society. But we seem to be failing. Is it interpretation of the numbers? Is it the application of the numbers? Is it, what is it based on your, because you've been there where you had to deliver the numbers. You even went to ANC, go mm -hmm. and well, they clapped hands and you left. Well, you see, uh, let's take a step back in 1991. Okay. When the, uh, I mean, uh, when Nelson Mandela was released in 1990, February, mm. the ANC was a socialist leaning organization. True. And uh, all the liberation movements were there, influenced largely by Russia and uh, China, mm. um, necessarily because those were compatriots in struggle. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, the the Russian, the, 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 the Berlin Wall had fallen, mm. and Russia, Gorbachev had started his uh, um, uh, Glasnost and uh, mm. Perestroika, yeah. which disrupted the entirety of the Russian society. I mean, the, the levels of poverty, declines in the yeah. life expectancy. I mean, it, it, was, a, it was chaos. Yeah. And Milton Friedman had gone to Russia to give them shock therapy mm. uh, at the level of a, a, at, at the level of intellectual level, mm. but at the level of politics, it was Reagan and Margaret Thatcher That's who were time. driving this whole uh, program mm. uh, that uh, made uh, Gorbachev bend backwards mm. uh, to, towards uh, this Western neoliberal uh, policies. Mm. China. At the same time, uh, uh, Deng, Deng Xiaoping, mm -hmm. had uh, also asked Milton to come. Mm -hmm. Now, Milton comes and uh, wants to administer shock therapy. Mm -hmm. But then sees what is happening in Russia, sees the suffering and everything, but also appreciates the backwardness of China. Um, uh, Isabel Weber writes about 
how China escaped uh, the shock therapy. Mm -hmm. And China escaped the shock therapy through uh, uh, the, 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 the Qing dynasty okay. of an ever normal granary, yeah. uh, which is uh, based on the principle of use the heavy, heavy to shoot at the light. Okay. Uh, use the, that which is heavy to shoot at that which is light, mm -hmm. which means ESCOM. I mean, uh, if you look at Bail, Bail and, uh, and Smarts mm. used ESCOM and uh, uh, ISCO mm. as the heavy that would shoot at the light. So you de-risk mm. the other industries that start have to rise out of this. Okay. So this Essentially, is, in simple language, you protect the most important, important of your assets. Important of assets. Yeah. And you use those to... So 2,000, 3,000 years ago, Mm. The kind of thing that nasty says, we'll use the heavy mm. to shoot at the light. Uh, and uh, this is the philosophy that then goes back to. Mm. It says, no, we agree there must be markets, but we'll have markets of a Chinese character. Okay. So I've gone into, twisted myself into a lot of uh, details mm -hmm. on this journey. So, um, now, when the ANC comes in, mm. there are no allies okay. that show promise. The only promise that you see is in Angola and Mozambique, mm. in terms of socialism. Are you, are you saying uh, that the Russians and the Chinese, why were they distancing themselves? They, they didn't allies? distance themselves. Yeah. But there was very little to learn from them. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, to execute uh, a socialist problem. Mm. That, is, that is successful. Yeah, that is successful. Yeah. Now, into that space comes shell mm. scenarios through Anglo uh, with the Montflair scenarios. Okay. The Montflair scenarios have three conditions. Yeah. The one condition is, will the transition okay? Mm. The negotiation okay? Will it okay fast enough? Okay. If it is fast enough and it has happened, will the government policies be populist or not? Mm -hmm. On the first one, the negotiations were, went on despite uh, Terra Blanche and his... Of course, uh, but, and his attempts. Yeah, and his attempts. <laughs> now, Chris Hani gets assassinated. Mandela declares the day of election. So it occurs fast enough. Yeah. Two ticks. Mm. The government then shifts towards what is uh, said to be non-populist, mm. mm. which is basically what Russia went through. Okay. Abandons the RDP and then adopts gear. Yeah. Now, this is this they, is now in the in the late nineties. Late nineties. Yeah. Now, there's gear. Mm. Two thousand and three, two thousand and one, two thousand and two. Uh, towards the ten year review, Tabon Bay, President Bay, he says, hey, and this thing is not working, mm. and changes gear. <laughs> so. We lost Bruce, track from yes. that moment on. I'll admit, yes. <laughs> maybe and you so remember. He, he goes into Asgisa. Yes. And with Asgisa, we start seeing growth. Mm. I mean, here there were a few things that that, 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 were, that, that were useful. Discipline and all that thing. Mm. Um, but he expands spending. He expands all these kinds of things. Mm. In all, and of course, there's welcome. And there we start seeing 6% growth. We mm. start seeing... A, Dropping unemployment, unemployment, dropping from 30 to 22 yeah. percent, all those things, and debt to GDP ratio occurring while we were also spending. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, at the end of that period, Polokwane occurs, and then after Polokwane, there is at the same world. time as the Polokwane occurs, there are financial crises in the world. Mm. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. 2008, now, around, yes, yes. now our treasury goes back to the 1996 position of gear. Huh. So, since then, then corruption comes in and then all these other things come in. Mm. Uh, where That's where we are now. The point is, in all this, there's never been a set of tools mm. that are credible, that are sustained, that government uses, except... Uh, the, 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 the CG models mm. uh, that are well back and my, uh, IMF based instead of using heterodox models that and those CG models are market based mm. free market mm. based true 
So you gravitate towards equilibrium and uh, all the time. Mm. We have been gravitating towards equilibrium for the last 30 years with unemployment uh, about 30%. Yeah. Whereas the, the other heterodox models acknowledge that uh, there is human agency. They have behavioral variables mm -hmm. that say you can intervene. And as you intervene, then you build those into the laws of motion of economics mm -hmm. to see how this thing goes forward. It's not a, a free market kind of thing. No. It, and then when you use those, you can actually stand on the podium and say, at the end of this prog period of five years, yeah. we'll have resolved the issue of unemployment dropped from 30% to 14%. We'll have done this. And those scenarios build specific mm -hmm. policies, talk to specific policies, and combinations of policies that are quite different mm. from uh, the, 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 the free market policies that we have followed. Are, are we saying <laughs> we, are applying, we are applying a model that is applied across the world, but yet our circumstances are not similar to the rest of the world? No, the CGE is a, 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 a an IMF World Bank kind mm. of uh, outfit. It has its own purpose of uh, forecasting two years, three years. Mm. Uh, and then it's uh, now reinforced by the MTF uh, of three years. Mm. So we budget the money. We don't budget impact. And and by not budgeting impact, we go back to the, the, the so social engineering issues. Well, mo all modeling have a social engineering, engineering issue. Yeah. But uh, the social engineering that we are driving is one that is market-based, which says... If there's inflation, mm. it's a market perturbation. We have uh, to where, where, where increase uh, interest uh, rates. Uh, and uh, the markets will, will, will solve it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the, the markets will solve things. That uh, they will gravitate towards equilibrium all uh. the time. So you return to equilibrium. Whereas uh, the, 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 the heterodox model, which uses behavioral approaches, is that no, there's no, you, we disrupt equilibrium all the time. Yes. Equilibrium to, is, is not an entity on its own. On its it, can own be, yes. it can be influenced. You have to disrupt it so that you achieve non-objectives that are about society and progress. That's what it is. Yes, uh, not markets. So then with, with, with that, we are in trouble because we, we are responding to something that doesn't think about people first. It thinks about the market first. The, the markets will be angry. Uh, so... <laughs> Now you look at the economic recovery and reconstruction plan yes. and the district development model is based on this. And uh, that's why we cannot escape the Guaraguara scenario, True. nor the Isibuja scenario yeah. uh, and move towards the Naila walk. We are trapped in that. This is what those things that mm. are put on the table are going to give us. Social engineering is, is a key factor particularly, and not particularly to South Africa, everywhere in the world. Mm. However, we, are, we, are, we have designed, you know, the thing about, about social engineering is whether you engineer it or not, society will happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will take a direction. It's one let's say, mm. uh, it may not be paved, but, but people it, it, are... It, it, will, they will walk that path. People will walk a path uh, yes, yeah. or create a path, yes. which is what happens. So, so now... Whether we agree or not on this, we have engineered a society. Well, the results that we are having um, are, are deliberate. Yeah. Uh, they may not have been intended, but our actions have been deliberate. It's a lot. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's what. Uh, yeah. That's, and we have avoided an alternative intentional path. Yes. Yes. And it goes back, I guess, to, to intentional paths. China being an mm. example mm. of an intentional path. Mm. And then when the intentional path is not working, they call people around the table and say, something is going wrong. Let's try to change this. Are we having an intentional path right now in South Africa? No, we don't have an intentional path. Hmm. We have intentions. For example? The, we have intentions. that uh, The RD, NDP says all the intentions. Yes. But the NDP is not intentional. Okay. <laughs> That's the yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> so we become deliberate in our policies. We take this policy and that policy and hope that it will give us that our intentions. Yeah. No. So by default, we become intentional in the processes that we have gone over which we are not moving. Let's, we, let's simplify the, this, mm. this, the intention versus intentional path. 
So it's easy to understand. Mm. Uh, and 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 model it around a person's life mm. who has a intentions of being rich mm. it's a better life mm. for all you know you want your life to be sorted you have intentions however your intentional part speaks a different language you uh, are how badly how is kolong and all of that is that what it is yes you think that these things will fall from heaven you say yeah, i didn't intend it you say but uh, man show me how you didn't intend it yeah and that's why you see coal here in south africa the just energy transition yes well it's good to think about the climate and everything mm. but show me that you are intentional about it mm. by being intentional about it would be to think about the thousands of people that have had chest problems from time immemorial mm and are toning to those and starting with them and helping them True, yeah. then you would be intentional and you could actually rise to society's conscience that indeed we are thinking about it mm. rather than think about an amorphous climate and say now let's go for solar panels and so on and so on where there are lobbies mm. and science shows that there is a lot of lobbying both in both on both, both ends, sides both yes. sides the yeah. scientists say all yeah. this but ultimately is those who have the money that win the day Naturally. and not the lives that you have there no in fact we have worsened lives now i mean come to think about it the writer has been there he said we are going to load shed in 16 <laughs> after he left two weeks later we are told we are on load shed in 2 and load shed in 1 yeah the question is can a complex system be switched like an electric switch mm. ironically i mean the, the which ironic, is what's happening now this is what is happening now yes. suddenly they say no we can solve this mm. and coco matsela coco has been saying we can solve this problem yeah. and he had solved it mm. i mean as a person who was reading the numbers all the time around manufacturing output mm. and uh, and uh, and uh, and mining output particularly because those are heavy users of, mm -hmm. uh, of electricity yeah. each time they had the planned uh, maintenance which happened every year mm. but at different times of course you'd see during that maintenance production productivity going down both at manufacturing and mm. and mining yet people are saying they didn't maintain they didn't have planned maintenance mm -hmm. the statistics tells a different story statistics are reflecting on these annual activities yes and they happen smoothly before they, beforehand they they show that there was planned maintenance and uh, the data will show that uh, during this period during that time when there's planned maintenance manufacturing and mining got affected yeah so you cannot now claim that there was no planned maintenance hmm. <laughs> so you're saying there's a deeper story than there is a deeper story in this and there uh, than anything of course matsela koko and molefe uh, mentioned in the zondo commission mm -hmm. they have to appear before that certainly yeah and matsela koko said yes he'll appear mm. uh, and uh, if uh, let zondo commission proceed and do what it has to do yeah. it's work mm. but now to not to recognize that when but Silla was there there was planned maintenance mm. it's it is it's silly and there was power and there was power <laughs> yes. we saw power in a household yes now suddenly the writer is gone the question is what was the mission of the writer mm. and who gave him the mandate yeah now everything is coming out they say he was hardly ever at work oh now but who was supervising him i mean there's a, a, a much deeper story, story in the south yeah. african issue where we started by imperialism and uh, apartheid, apartheid <laughs> and not being alive to what we have to do now 100 years and i i like what makwana says that mm. uh, escom is coming back now escom was 100 years on the 1st of march yes now recently <laughs> didn't we owe it to escom to mm. celebrate it rather than to have had this kind of <laughs> fallout <laughs> interesting interesting I, so i mean I, i tweeted on that day uh, and i i i i congratulated 100 years of 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 esco uh, and uh, i remember i got comments where well, there's nothing to celebrate here and you're saying well it's worthy of a celebration it's esco has always been worthy of a celebration yeah uh, it is ourselves who are not 
taking care of uh, um, of, of Robben Island. Mm. As an example. As an example. Yeah. So what else can we take care of? If we can't take care of uh, icons of struggle, yeah. graves and so on. Winnie Mandela, Brantford House gets painted after she's dead. Mm. To hurriedly. So all the time, the behavior and conduct of policy making hmm. is that one of a hurried thing to cover up. Sure. Instead of modeling the future and saying, this is the future. And uh, because people live 90 years in China, we'll plan for 90 years. Do you know, in you, South Africa, we, play, we have 62 years. We must plan for 62 years. And, and, and you said currently we seem to be working around models that speak of two years, three years. Well, the MTF now uh. has actually become the cycle around which, where we plan. And it is influencing the plan around planning money. Okay. Instead of planning impact. And human life. In human lives. And that's why when the president rises, he can't say how many jobs will be created. How are we going to deal with the unemployment? He'll say, we have all these projects. So he'll read a, a litany, a long mm. list of things, and hope that by some magic, all these things will add up and generate jobs. They don't. Yeah, It's a deliberate, intentional process of foresight tools that at, right at the beginning, you have an idea of where you are going. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's talk about the individual when we speak scenario planning in South mm. Africa. And... As uh, life expenses here, South Africa is 62, give or take. Are we saying we should look at a person at the moment they are born mm. and look at them in anticipation of when they'll pass away and say, can we model South Africa around this individual life? Is that how it should be done? The markets say that uh, the world is uncertain and uh, you cannot plan for such a long period of time. Okay. Now, what a... <laughs> a BS, yes. a bundle of BS. Yes. You can, because you know that life expectancy of an individual is 63, 70. Mm -hmm. You can anchor your plan around that. Yeah. And you know the 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 the, the evolution of that path. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change soon. Human beings are not suddenly going to have eyes at the back or no. 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 They are what they are because biology has tune them to be that over billions of years. That's it. Now, I'll, I'll this, is, though, this as, is a stable... As a slight detour, we'll go back. Yeah. I have a feeling South Africans will be able to see in the dark. <laughs> That's another <laughs> one altogether. <laughs> Very soon we'll be able to see in the dark. But As carry on. By, 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 by through adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <laughs> it is. Yes. yes. Now, that, that's a constant. Mm. The, 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 what sustains that, we also know is good health, nutrition, and so on and so on. Mm. Once you have gotten that, then you have to model an economy that will make these people comfortable. Yeah. And now, the, the markets okay. come and disrupt. They say, well, no, it's busts and booms oh. that come with markets, and yes. they disrupt lives. And the modeling that we have is that one of busts and booms mm. called business cycles. You know, yeah. it's a, they say they are natural. Business cycles are natural. <laughs> Nothing natural about business cycles. <laughs> they influence. They influence. Yeah. I mean, think about uh, uh, the, 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 the Fed uh, CEO, mm. um, um, Greenspan. Mm. Yes, the, the longest. Uh, yes, in, in, years. Yes, yeah. yeah. He, he comes, uh, we are attending a meeting at the IMF, and uh, he makes a presentation, and he says, well, makes a confession that he's so much a believer in Fried, Milton Friedman's uh, free market mm. that he was surprised that uh, the, 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 um, the lemon mortgages, okay. the mortgages that were lemon, pure lemon, mm. were mixed with the, the, the performing and they, average, and they average them out and then cost this problem. The 2008 the, yes, issues, issues. Yes, yeah. He said he didn't believe that that could happen. Yeah. But we have an experience here in South Africa of free market where Pepsi tried to enter the market and Coke bought all the bottles. Mm. So and they had nothing. Could, they, had, they had nothing to bottle. Them. Yes. So there's no free market here. It's a cutthroat, ugly scene of fights, of everything, of yeah. value destruction. Huh. That's what this thing is about, called mm. free market. Mm. And now in the free market, we say government shouldn't intervene so that the fights can go on. <laughs> now, and and, and they should, it shouldn't be like that. 
government has the right to intervene. It must intervene because it has agency. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it cannot only use orientation and uh, we say there must be small government. Small government when we are, there's so much poverty. Mm. Small government in education who privatize education, who privatize electricity, who privatize health. Hmm. By the way, we only have 2 million households that are targeted by private sector yes. in this country. Yes. Sure. What happens to the 15 million yeah. households? You, you speak so much about uh, privatization <laughs> as, a, as a design, as a model, that there's a model that exists of privatization. You destroy it first, so it, it cheapens it, and then you sell it for almost nothing to the private sector, which is possibly what could happen with some of our entities. ESCOM, yeah, ESCOM, ESCOM being, ESCOM being ESCOM. one, SAA being being another example. The Ukraine-Russia war has mm. helped South Africa so much. Yeah, that uh, it exposed the the, the Western plan mm. and uh, the stupidity of South Africa, unless. This was a planned collaboration between our government and this. Mm. But I'm sure we are going to see a Zondo 2 on this one. How, how, how did it, the, the Ukraine war help us? You see, the Germans were selling us the rooftops. Uh -huh. If Ukraine war didn't occur, Germany wouldn't be using coal. It would still be using something else and selling us rooftops mm. and telling us about uh, solar panels and wind. I must admit, my solar panels are from Germany. So there you go. Oh, yes. I mean... The, the, I'll come and tell you about a, a, an energy source. Uh -huh. the, Germany knows that you can't industrialize on solar panels. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. They destroyed their nuclear system, mm -hmm. which the French retained. And Germany has backup from the pools. Mm -hmm. They know when the electricity goes, France will help them. Now, of course, they, before they fought with fought on the side of Ukraine, Russia was giving them all kinds of things. Guess so all when, of you, when you look at all that, uh -huh. you realize that this thing was a ploy to make Africa buy solar panels that are manufactured elsewhere. Mm -hmm. what, does the, what is the competitive advantage that South Africa have on solar panels? We don't manufacture them. Mm -hmm. And so we don't what, what is the, 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 the battery that stores the that power. stores the power. Yeah. So we are consumers mm. and nothing else. And we want to leave coal that we have, which is our competitive advantage. Adam Smith talks about competitive advantage, mm. which of course is also a, a flawed system, because in the when you have competitive advantage of minerals, they say, well, you send them as they are; they'll be processed where the competitive advantage for for processing is there. Yeah, that's nonsense. Mm. So. Even under circumstances of competitive advantage of products, we even abandon the competitive advantage that we have, of, that we have of coal. Huh. And then they want our coal there. So the Ukraine war, when Russia stopped supplying gas and power, essentially, yes, yeah. to, other, to some of these European countries, they had to come knocking at our door and asking for coal. coal. And now look at the one side. Mm. Our roads are being destroyed by these trucks. Children are getting killed mm. in the hunt and because ride range for money. Trucks are working trucks hard. Trucks are working hard. So it's the same kind of thing of the 60% of children not registered mm. on the birth certificate. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. It's, it's repeating itself. And policy doesn't see the interconnectedness of this thing. Huh. Wow. So until we've got people who can think there, we are doomed as a country. It's, it's, a, it's a serious problem. It's a serious indictment mm. on Ramaphosa's uh, 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 government. Is this problem, when you define the different uh, governments that we've had, Mandela, Ramapo Radambeki, Ramaphosa, and, and Zuma for that matter, what are some of the, the poignant differences that stand out about these differences? Because it's easy to point, look, we're heading towards, uh, and when we fly this, uh, uh, the Julius Malema match, which is what I call it, would have happened. Mm. However, when we are recording it, it's an, it's anticipated. It's yeah. happening tomorrow. It's a it's a it's a vote of no confidence against the president. Mm. Uh, however, when you describe these things in this conversation we're having, it this is not something that was created a minute ago. This is something that we've been building towards, or has it accelerated? Um. Let me go back, take a step back from 92 yeah. with the Mont Flair scenarios. Okay. Uh, 
colleagues that are heterodoxy mm-hmm. argue very passionately around uh, that uh, the gear project was a, a false, a failed project. Mm-hmm. I agree that it didn't yield results. Mm. But at the same time, I say, faced with Angola and Mozambique and the rest of the world, what would you have done mm-hmm. coming from out of prison in Mandela? What would you have uh, settled for? Yeah. The circumstances were such that it was the kind of Litovsk, uh, Brad Litovsk treaty mm-hmm. that uh, uh, Lenin had to have uh, between himself and the German. Mm-hmm. And acknowledging that that treaty is a wrong treaty. Yeah. But under the circumstances, it was the best that could be done. Absolutely. And as Mandela left, he said, it's now, it's in your hands now. Mm-hmm. And indeed, when Beji took over, he understood that it's in his, in his hands now. Mm-hmm. And that's why the scenarios in the memories of the future changed mm-hmm. to Asgisa. But towards the end of his term, yeah. uh, there was a, a, this, uh, which Mushorozi came up with, uh, the, 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 the National Development Plan. Mm-hmm. By the way, the memories of the future scenarios were created by us in government. Mm-hmm. We showed that we will be on a socialoza path. Okay. And indeed, we are moving towards that socialoza mm-hmm. path. Now, but when Pulogwan happened, we knew that there was going to be discontinuity. Okay. And uh, the future we chose as scenarios was created uh, by ourselves in government. Mm. And we showed exactly what will happen under that scenario. We've got Movango, we've got uh, uh, Not Yet Uhuru, and we've got uh, Ngalakata. Mm. And Ngalakata, Mvango is the one that we have fallen into, which is the worst case scenario. Okay. Those three scenarios were all, all, worst, all, 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 were, were all bad bad case oh, scenarios. It, it, but so uh, the there, one there was, was the West the other. and then we landed on the West one. Uh, uh, on corruption, on all these things, on policies, on South Africa losing its bid. Mm. So Msholozi presided over the deterioration. Okay. He introduced the NDP, but the NDP, like all the other, the other two scenarios, were not quantified. Mm-hmm. Now, NDP, all these scenarios were storylines. <laughs> Uh, they were not quantified. They were novels. They, they were novels, yes. yeah. <laughs> now, NDP is another storyline, one storyline, no other options. Mm. And it's a big one, 300 and something pages to think. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, something that uh, bureaucrats visit to quote the few things <laughs> and then do everything else uh, but yeah. the NDP. It's a reference document. It's a reference document <laughs> that... Uh, now, beyond that, we met as a group of people to come up with the Lamity scenario. Mm. And when we met, I said to the colleagues, no. I mean, before I left office, yeah. I was worried about this, that uh, we are going the wrong route. Mm. And in part, it's because we don't have typical modeling mm. that would be used. So I brought uh, the, 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 the tools that we use in SESA. Okay. That, are not for, that are not for purposes of economic modeling. Mm. but are for purposes of testing the robustness of the statistics. Yeah. And, but once you have those, then you can move on the Leontief input-output tables, mm. uh, which the Russians used for their planning mm. and uh, surprise the Americans in terms of progress they made. True. So on this, you've got the, 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 the supply and use tables on the national account, and uh, the national account has all these three things, uh, which is input-output tables, uh, supply and use tables, mm. Uh, social accounting matrix as well as um, growth accounting framework. Mm. So I said, colleagues, can we look at this so that we can inform our planning? Mm -hmm. Yes. At DG level. Yes. With this, I said, with this that we have really, we we can't continue on this. Mm. Why don't you use some of the tools that we have in States SA for purposes of planning? Mm. We have them only ourselves for looking at uh, the distributions, and uh, particularly to test the robustness of, uh, of the, the, numbers. The, the, the numbers. Yeah, and uh, we are satisfied that uh, the rows and columns have the same total. Mm. The rows and columns uh, to the same uh, value. You know yeah. that kind of thing. So, by the way, the national account mm. was born. Uh, it's, it's something. Uh, 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 something done by Kuznets, but uh, at the end of the Second World War the national account 
or rather at the end of the Second World War, mm. the Statistics Commission was one of the first commissions to be established in 1945. The purpose of this was to ensure that there is no more war. Mm. Because the First and the Second World War were a result of macroeconomic instabilities, True. not because the Prussian person killed somebody mm -mm. else, which has been fed mm. at, uh, in our history books, mm. quite, what a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> so the national account is a very important mm. uh, component of our work, obviously because of abuse on focusing on growth only. Mm. The national account has become a very bad instrument because it's it's abused and at the last statistics commission one of the things that we are looking at is uh, beyond gdp mm. the what? question i asked at the un statistics commission was what are we what what mystery what myth mm. uh, what mischief uh, what are we trying to resolve here? we need to ask that question yeah and in that regard we need to ask that question as well here around uh, what our models have to be are we clear? I think theoretically, I'm sure we are, but practically it's a different story about what we're trying to solve as South Africa. No, I don't think theoretically we are, we are clear. If we are theoretically clear, clar that theoretical clarity will direct the path. Yeah. I, I think uh, what we are not clear about is what path do we desire? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say reduce poverty. I mean, we are, we are clear on exhortations. Yes. <laughs> exhortations like reading the Bible, that we are clear. Mm. The triple challenges, we can read it over at night. Mm. But uh, what it actually means in terms of the set of policies that have to be executed, mm. there is the clarity is as clear as mud. You can see oh. it in the ERRP yeah. and in the district development model. <laughs> so, so but, but if you ask, so in essence, you're saying if you were to ask 10 senior government officials, the same question about what are we doing, you'll get different 10 different answers. Uh, the DA asked Mshalozi what uh, the, uh, the, the nine-point plan was before it mutated into 14-point plan. Mm. He was at a loss. <laughs> so the absence of clarity on those things, is, this is what it means. Is that the heart well, of our that's problems? The, that's the heart of our problems. Yes. That, uh, we, we, we do not have an understanding and clarity of what set of policies work together to resolve our problems. Yeah. And and we, so we, basically the speech of the president and the speech of the minister of finance is inputs. Mm. You would expect the speech of the president to be impact. But no input. You, you don't look at inputs, you look at impact. Uh, and say in the next five years, because of the programs that we have adopted, we'll increase jobs by 95 million will reduce unemployment by this, by that, because he has confidence in the machine in the background. Yeah. But because he's, he's empty on the impact, he has to make his speech an input speech. Huh. Which is why it always has <laughs> introduces new things, All changes and changes of that. Yes. Instead of saying, Minister, we talked about this impact. I want to hold you to this impact. Inputs are easy. I mean, it's money, it's this, it's that. Yes. It's easy to identify. Impact is more complex. And that hard work of impact hmm. is, the, uh, is, the, is, the, is the residence uh, or the province of, of modeling. And uh, you need sophisticated tools of modeling to come to that. Like a growth accounting framework, for example. Is that the type of tools you speak of? You know, uh, Slavi Murudu and George Joloff mm -hmm. were really leading my policy. Yeah. And that I was saying, guys, we need to help government. Mm. Uh, I don't mind stepping out of my role as a statistician to yeah. look into planning. Okay. George Joloff and Slavi Murudu were looking at this. George actually worked on the gro growth accounting framework mm. because on the national account, the last section on the national account talks to growth accounting framework. Yes which uh, has three streams of, um, uh, um, of trade, of uh, employment, and uh, a balance of trade, uh, employment, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and something else. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the, 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 the channels through which this growth accounting framework work towards is a demographic dividend. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, the demographic dividend, which is the channel through 
uh, employability of people and trade, mm -hmm. which is uh, how much your exports are, are doing, and of course your, your own internal uh, business. Mm -hmm. The aim at the end is to increase incomes of the nation, okay. of the persons in the nation. Yeah. Has it happened? It doesn't. Because the channels, as you see them, they are not supporting increased incomes in South Africa. We look like we, we have all systems, not systems, all the tools that we need. However, we still come out with bad results. Dumb example, I ask you to bake a cake. You have all the ingredients. However, you don't know how to to combine them to build the, the final product. Is that a true interpretation of our situation? It's a true interpretation, but it is about the tools. Okay. Uh, the ingredients like statistical data is there. Yes. But the tools to bring that all together don't exist. The ones that we have are not appropriate. Okay. That's the problem. And we are hung on this inappropriate this, tools yeah. of the CG. Why is that? Why are we holding on to tools that don't seem to benefit because us? Because looking at economics from free market perspective yeah, yeah. prescribes a set of tools yeah, for yeah. you. Looking at it differently mm. prescribes a different set of tools. Mm. You cannot bring those together. And most of the time in meetings, those who sit and don't understand modeling want to see whether these things can average out. No, there's they no don't. averaging out of this. Yeah. You don't bring the bad, the bad uh, mortgages uh, with the good ones. And hope that they, and hope that they will work. That's yeah. what Alan Greenspan actually discovered yeah. after believing that they wouldn't. <laughs> they, they would. Yes. I mean, they, they wouldn't. He, he, uh, bring, he, yes. he thought they might work. He, he a, thought, yeah. Let's hope for the best. best. Take a plunge and hope for the best. Is that, is, is that where we are as South That's Africa. where we are as South Africa today. That's why I'm saying ERRP, when you look at it, is not going to give you any growth. Mm. And in fact, by admission by the Reserve Bank now, they have revised the growth rates much lower. Yeah. Uh, so is the Ministry of Finance. In terms of unemployment, they have projected that we'll have 38% unemployment. Now, what we need to do as society is government or Politicians, mm -hmm. what is your promise? Then we go to the Red Book of uh, Treasury mm -hmm. and say, the ruling party, you are saying, you said, you, you, you under your supervision, you are promising us 38% unemployment in 2026 and you want us to vote you mm -hmm. into power. Mm -hmm. The problem is people don't look at this evidence and then put the people who are supposed to rule or govern on the spot. Yeah. That's where it has to be. And you as the media, have to assemble all these other people and say, show me future proof of this. Sure. Then we will get better results. We'll get better uh, politics in the country. Well, but, but you, you and I know that we know those that are not delivering better results. Mm. It's not confusing it's, it's, oh, yes. who, those, those are not, who, who those are. They, we know here they are. They're mm. not producing good results, but we keep putting them into power. Surely there's something else at play here. It's not just the numbers. Yes, the numbers. Yes, the information. Yes, the knowledge. Uh, I was watching a, a, a Julius, a Floyd Shibambo interview mm. where he says political education is probably one of our biggest problems currently in South Africa, where we have segments of our, of our population that don't participate in politics at all, and they hope that things work out all on their own. So, so there's something else here. It's not just, uh, you know, when you know, Hore, yes. this is not working, but you keep doing it. You're an abused girlfriend, about Coming Clava, back, yes. and you keep going back to this. Something else is at play. I, I, I write in, on our platform that Lenin in 1920, addressing the Bolshevik revolution, said there are three enemies in the Bolshevik state. Mm. The first is communist conceit. The second is illiteracy. And the third is bribery. Mm. Regarding the first enemy, communist conceit, looks at a member of the Communist Party who has not yet been combed out and who imagines he can solve all his problems by issuing communist decrees is guilty of communist conceit because he is still a member of the ruling party and is employed in some government office. He imagines this entity, this entitles him to talk about the results of political education. Uh -huh. 
So he's a guy who just marches around and then mm. throws slogans around and, and thinks that uh, he solved the problem. Mm. The second in enemy, illiteracy. So long as there is such a thing as illiteracy in our country, it is too much to talk about political education. This is not a political problem. It is a condition without which it is useless talking about politics. Mm. An illiterate person stands outside politics. He must first learn his ABC. Without that, there can be no politics. Yeah. Without that, there are rumors, gossip, fairy tales, and prejudices, but not politics. Hmm. The third enemy is bribery. Here, we have not even an approach to politics. Here, it is impossible to pursue politics because all measures are left hanging in the air and produce absolutely no results. A law applied in conditions which permit of widespread bribery can only make things worse. Under such conditions, no politics, whatever can be pursued, a fundamental condition for, uh, sorry, a, a law applied in conditions which permit of widespread bribery can only make things worse. Mm -hmm. Under such conditions, no politics, whatever can be pursued, the fundamental condition for engaging in politics is, engage, is lacking. Mm. To be able to outline our political task to the people, to be able to say to the masses that things we must strive for, and this is what we should be doing, we must understand that a higher cultural level of the masses is what is required. Lenin, close quote, 1920. <laughs> now, he could be talking to our government Currently, today, 100 yeah. years later. Exactly identical. Identical. Wow. Because <laughs> there's a friend of mine who says we can solve a problem of electricity in the next two months, but it'll take us a long time to solve the problem of, of education because that's where our true issues really lie. Because we, we end up having created a society of people that are happy to be in the bus. Yes, it's too hot in the bus. There is no way to open the door, yeah. the window, but they will stay. Uh, they don't know where, exactly where the bus is it's going, going. Uh, but they will stay. Uh, the driver, once in a while, stops on the side of the road, reassures them that everything it's is inside. fine, <laughs> and then goes back to drive, and they keep going. We, and, and he says, once, once the people in the bus get to be conscientized about the the fact that this is not right. Mm. Being in a bus that you don't know where it's going, no, it, and being hot in this bus and you can't control, control it. your conditions is wrong. Once the people get educated about that, it's the illiteracy, illiteracy that you speak yes, of. Yeah. And it says, until then, no, no, we are screwed. This Completely. problem will never go away. So the, you can see that uh, the ab exclusion in education is a deliberate process. Yeah. to yield results for politicians that will sustain them in power forever. Mm. That's what is happening. Wow. The issue that is more fundamental is that, uh, and uh, Marty Lensky, uh, where we attended it at Harvard, argues very clearly that uh, people don't fear change, but they fear loss. Okay, explain. Um, the Chinese when they made this point that uh, they are not the biggest economy. Uh -huh. It was not about that change as okay. Mm. It was about loss of the things that they have had at the time. Potential loss. Potential loss yeah. and so on and so on, yes. In fact, they were sure that they would lose uh, this and that uh -huh. in the UN system. Yeah. But through... And that's where technical change and adaptive change become very important as yeah. processes. Mm. So they needed space for adaptive change. And that's what I was, when I convened the meeting and asked the chair to convene the meeting, mm. was to move away or rather understand that this thing is not about technical change, it's about adaptive change. Yeah. And it is that adaptive change, which is consciousness, Mm. Higher level of consciousness, mm. higher level of cultural innovation, yeah. cultural understanding, understanding is the one that uh, we need to get to. Yeah. Rather than the backdoor culture, the short termism culture. But because we are trapped in that survival mode, 
we know it is uncomfortable, but that is what we have come to be acquainted with. So, so we and don't therefore become a political fodder for anybody. So we don't, <laughs> we don't, we don't. You're saying we don't want to lose even the worst scenario that we have now. Because you don't know what, where you are jumping. Because in. you don't know the, the, the alternative. The alternative. And that is why modeling is very important. Yeah. Because then you can show future proof of the model. Think about Lembed sitting there with Mandela and that day Waltasi Sulu, Mda, uh, that day Mbeki, mm. Mercy Sulu, Me, Ekuzwayo, and others. Mm. In 1945. Mm -hmm. Or 44. That's Govan. That's before. That's yes. Govan. Govan Bay. Yes. Hey, no, not, not I know I'm thinking when yes, you say yeah, 40, no, no, it must yeah, be yeah. The, the old Govan, man. The old man. Yes. At the end of that discussion, mm. or as they discussed that, they were building into the thinking freedom in our time, in our lifetime. Yeah. And they achieved freedom in their lifetime. That's true. Yes. What 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 is the well, carry on, carry yes. on, complete your now, thoughts. Now you, you can see that in the discussion. There was evidence that that freedom will come. Yeah, they all got nine of them. All the, the trialists got arrested for twenty-seven years. Mm. But even at, under those circumstances, it was freedom in a lifetime. Yeah, that level of commitment means that they had modeled, they had understood. And Mandela says in a letter to Adelaide Tambo, nineteen sixty-seven, from prison, uh. says, "Significant progress can always be achievable." If we ourselves plan in the detail so that matters of faith when they occur, they occur on our own terms. Mm. Now, here is our faith. We got corruption. <laughs> uh, we got a, 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 a drought in the 1950s, uh, 19, 2015 and mm. so on. Mm. Uh, we got a, a COVID. Yeah. Uh, we have flood, floods. Then, and then we got floods and then <laughs> we got insurrection. Yeah. Uh, now we have uh, this uh, uh, demonstration by the Red B Reds. Well, call, call, well, call, call, call uh, uh, what's this load shedding a part of our, our, yeah, yeah, our yeah, disaster? Well, I, I just forgot it yes, because I've got to it. Yes. yes, and then the, and these things are things happening on their own terms, not on our own, on terms, our own terms, because we don't have this future proof kind of planning that is etched in serious modeling work. For a country as complex as South Africa. Because, because if you model, in my understanding of it, is that you will know what to do when there is a disaster as, as grave as the one that happened in KZN where there was a flooding. Mm. Because you anticipate all possibilities, including that one. Absolutely. You, you look at all risks, all risk profiles. I Absolutely. mean, let's just say, uh, during COVID, these guys did something very smart. The mm. statistician general yeah. is my successor there, is Sanga Yeah. Uh, I think he outflanked me completely on that <laughs> one, where he looked at uh, the risk matrix of COVID. Mm. And they used uh, the, the data from the census, put it together, and at the level of 100,000 entities, mm. you can look at the risk profile of COVID. If COVID these are people who are at the risk mm. of having COVID, they're giving... So you can use all that for every other risk Related. That, that, that may emerge. So it's, 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 it's a fantastic product. Sure. I bet there is no civil servant we have gone in there except the statistician general himself and his office. Which goes to the, to the question, uh, Dr. Lohotla, you, 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 you served as a statistician general for a considerable amount of time. You've produced a lot of results. Mm on a quarterly basis, on a daily basis. And you're one who's not afraid uh, to communicate the information. Mm. And more than just give, me, give us the numbers, you also give us the interpretation. Because that's also important mm. when, when you're talking statistics. Surely a lot of your information it has been consumed. But what's the point of it being consumed but not utilized? Surely that must be frustrating. Well, I mean, it is. Uh, you, you don't want to be like a dog after running a race and then you don't see sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. Nothing Nothing happens. happens. No, you don't see the sweat. <laughs> on a horse, you will see the sweat. Mm. I mean, on a dog, because it's very <laughs> thick, you I can't see the sweat. Yes. So it was this frustration of not seeing the sweat that made me look at these modeling techniques to interface with the planning. Mm. I mean, at one point when I was presenting in New York, uh, and writing an article uh, for the 
uh, International Association of Official Statisticians, which yeah. is uh, the bean counters meeting every day. Mm. I said I would rather dance on the serrated side of the saw <laughs> rather than on the plain side. Why is so that? <laughs> on the plain side is safe. Yes, you yeah, want to dance saw, on the... On the serrated because on, the serrated on the helps, you, helps you to intersect with planning. Yeah. And uh, possibly still survive without a toe, losing your toe. That, that means that means <laughs> that means your dancing must be very good well, to survive. To survive. Yes. yes. But that's the space where I think statistics has to go. Yeah. To dance on that serrated side uh, so that uh, the politicians understand that statistics is not a lamppost used for uh, by a drunken person to seek support. It mm. is to enlighten. Do we have our priorities wrong? You seem to, to say that South Africa, with all the complications, we have our priorities completely wrong. Mm. What, what do you see as the priorities currently? And what, are, what should be the order of our priorities, so to speak? Uh, you know, we are going for 2024 elections. Mm. The politicians will be talking about electricity, water, sanitation, and so on. Of course, uh, mm. with the, this uh, man-made crisis on electricity, yes. electricity is going to show in the numbers that it is a, a drive of poverty, no doubt. Yes. It will show that it is a drive of poverty. Our biggest drive of poverty is unemployment. Mm -hmm. It contributes 52% of our poverty. Yeah. Now, in, 19, in 2001, the number there was 32%. Much lower. Much lower. Yeah. 33% rather. Mm. By 2011, mm. it had moved to 40%. Mm. Five years later, mind you, a gap of 10 years, mm. 2001 mm. to 2011, 33% to 40. Yeah. 2011 to 20, 2016, it was 52%. It doubled in half the time as a driver of poverty, unemployment. Mm. So it is a top priority. Yeah. Combine it with lack of education, yeah. uh, which was at 16, which has moved uh, rather from about 18 to now 12%. Uh, when you put those two together, 65% of our problems are driven by lack of education and, and poverty and, po and, 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 unemployment. and, and unemployment yeah. of our problems. Yes. Now, the other 35% is uh, in housing. It's everything else like everything that remains. Else. Yes, that remains. But the politicians will be talking about those things and not this other. Huh. <laughs> because you can count the number of houses that you have built. Of course. And you can't look at uh, the number of people. people that you need to employ and the impact. Because, so our campaign must be towards, or, towards uh, the, 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 those impacts. For, for, for the youth, those things like um, uh, housing, electricity, account for very little for their poverty. Mm. It is about no one, people who are not in school. Yeah where there is no person employed in the household yes and uh, and 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 and, uh, and unemployment mm. those three account for 70 percent of po youth poverty however in, in all that you have an, a youth that is clearly interested in one getting educated that is clearly interested in making a contribution to the economy that's why they go on all sorts of protests trying to fight for their rights to get better or, or to get education, let alone better education. And then, but you speak of, of a missing middle that cannot afford to take them to school. So you're saying the approach should be different in how we solve it. Well, Komape died in a protest. In a pit. The little boy, yes. His sin was he offended the authorities by wanting education. Yeah. Now, Similar circumstances have happened in Western Cape, in Eastern Cape. Mm. Now, the people who have passed metric and can should be in 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 in, in advance and all this other. Mm. I mean, the more recent, uh, their only scene is to say we want education. in my submission to the Kheke Commission, mm. I said, 
make this thing free. For peace sake. For, for everyone. <laughs> for peace sake. There are two things that you achieve when you do that. Yeah. The most important one is nation building. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot build a nation by different streams in education. Mm. In time, those who cannot afford will always have their student issues different from those that can afford. Mm. And those who can afford will create their own uh, institution of education. Like the Africaners have just said, yes, here's we'll our university. Yeah. Now, where is the nation building mission in that? Yeah. It, 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 it dies. What, 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 about... that, uh, what we are deciding and fighting over is a flag. Uh, uh, 200 uh. Million. Now, you see, when we do that, you take these people through a system and say, we'll pay for all of you. Mm. Whether your father is rich, billionaire, doesn't matter. We'll go and tax him. Yes. But you will get this education free here. There is a condition. Every year, all of you guys at university, all of you, every year, each one of you, write a mini thesis of about 10 pages mm. of the South Africa you desire. Okay. Now, these theses come to uh, be adjudicated mm. by policymakers and so on. And from there, we start building a nation that says, this is what we desire. Mm. Now, you start nitpicking and saying, these ones will pay for, those ones will not pay for. Forgetting that this child who is at university mm. is an output of 60% of the people whose certificate, the father's name appears on the certificate. Yeah. And they say, how are you going to put that money together? Mm. That belongs to these two desperate, hmm. disparate people. Yeah. They are disparate. They are, the mother had long misled. Yeah. I, I mean, let this Poor guy... Yes, yeah, so, 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 uh, now this is the, the yeah. problem wow. now this is where the policy doesn't talk to the material conditions oh. and they can talk about several of them but it is at the conception of life that we have not as yet grasped this and grasp that anger of the man who knows mm -hmm. only this and nothing else. Do you know, do you know I, I, I look at it and say, what, if, what about argument that says a government cannot afford to take everyone to school? No, 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 that's, that's nonsense. I mean, uh, these guys say, I mean, some of the arguments is uh, the apartheid was servicing very few people. True. So if there are more, the more should be dispensed with. Mm, that's so because we can't supply for them. But you would have to sacrifice in any budget, you'll have to sacrifice something to be able to afford this. Yeah, no, no, no. The point is when we fought for freedom, uh -huh. when South Africans fought for freedom, the comparison with apartheid is not something that should be made. Mm. It's, it's we, a non have, we have this number of people. China has 1.4 billion people mm -hmm. and it is saying we'll satisfy all of them. Yeah. It is the duty of the government, the state, to satisfy all of them. Mm. and you don't have to put barriers because this non-funding puts barriers on children that are deserving. Then on the other side, the slots at university can only accommodate 160,000. Mm. So that means when, that we don't have enough. We don't have enough. Yeah. Why haven't we built universities? I mean, we are driven by supply economics instead of the demand economics. Yeah. And uh, that's the constraint that the, the, the market free market fundamentalism makes. I mean, uh, McDougall, mm. uh, I think it's McDougall, who uh, looks at uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, profit maximization, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That's the theory of the firm. Mm. And as a point. And then you add all those points, and then you've got uh, products in the market. He argues quite correctly dispensing with that kind of issue that there is an ooh in the theory of the firm, not mm. a V-shape, it's an okay. ooh shape. Yeah. And along that ooh shape, you can actually expand. Okay. But that's where the government intervention comes in mm. to de-risk the light that you have to shoot at yeah. in, the, in the words of Qing Dynasty. That uh, you use this 
the might, the heavy, yeah, to de-risk all of them so that you can extend the ooh. Where marginal cost equals to marginal revenue. You expand the firm, you increase employment, mm. you do all those kinds of things. But when private firms act individually as they do, mm. they are always afraid of what may happen. But when you de-risk it by something like ESCOM, which is now which should be in the state hands, mm. it's a de-risker. De uh, steel is a de-risker and mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. And Van der Bale understood that architecture and smarts understood that architecture. That is why I found a bail with $16 million rands mm. opened ESCOM and paid off the loan. Now, what is the mistake with ESCOM? We went into the open markets yeah. instead of using our pensions. Of course, our pensions are being abused. Now, $56 billion has anyway, been lost. Yes. Uh, and nobody has been held to account. And mm. the civil servants are sitting there like myself, who still has a share in that pension. Mm. A PIC. And we are, we are PIC, yes. we are sitting there and they're saying, for $56 billion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but because the question is, do I still have my money in there? And uh, but we are not getting adequately angry. Yes, yeah, okay. To take these people to court. Yeah. It, it's not something that should resolve itself. It's something that we should say our pensions will be used for ESCOM, mm. will be used for this, so that, and for education. We don't have to go borrow because there is money somewhere. I mean, you go and borrow. I mean, they, they say that uh, you crowd out mm. the private sector when you, yes. you, you, you lend as government. No, there's nothing like that. Yeah. Government has to lend, has to do all those things so that you de-risk uh, the private sector. I mean, if you think about the web, James mm. Webb, mm -hmm. that has been a joint operation by government uh, governments mm. and some private sector. But in time, the private sector will be de-risked mm -hmm. by that project. And then they can thrive. Let's 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 simplify what you're saying, uh, and, and bring it down to the mm. level of anyone's understanding, and say, you put in the money here with the might of your ability of companies the size of ESCOM, mm. and in the long run, no, uh, it, it pays itself. Do I understand? Yes, you correctly? It, pay, it it pays itself. Yes, I mean ESCOM was had a, a sovereign rating bigger than the. A, 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 a sovereign rating bigger than the, the sovereign. Mm -hmm. as the itself. country itself. Yes. yes. It, it, because it paid for itself. It's a, now it's a the, different story. Of... Now it's a different story. Yes. But uh, it's a different story because you have brought all kinds of interests there. The municipalities now want to raise money on the basis of ESCOM charges. Mm. And then you go and punish society. You make them uh, poor. Uh, you lose control of the controlled prices that mm. ESCOM can actually provide. I mean, uh, administered prices. Kanyako mm. uh, was at a cabinet, at mm. parliament, yeah. reporting on these administered prices. And one of the fastest growing administered prices was of ESCOM. Mm. And administered prices have to be far lower than inflation. Yeah. Now, now you think you still have a, you have a policy space here. Huh. There's none. It, it's, a, it's like head boys. Playing uh, the little games of boys mm. while animals are Mrabara. Going, Mrabara, while animals are eating the the, the, <laughs> the crops in the fields. Let, 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 let's let's go back to education quickly and say, you you are funding free education. Everyone goes to school. Everyone can go to school. Everyone of of school going age they can go to school, and they come out of that schooling system, university, and they found no jobs available which is what's happening now. We, we are advocating for go, go to school and learn. How do we then solve that? Because we are facing it currently. No, no, no. There are two things here. Mm. If you look at level of unemployment of graduates, it's only 10% mm. against those who have matric at 50%. Yeah. Now, if there are children who have passed matric and are deserving of going to school, mm. but they are trapped by this problem of 60%, 30%, which is a bedroom issue. Yeah. yeah, not necessarily a government issue, but you're saying the, is, the inability is, to pay. The inability to pay yes. is what is, and that problem of inability is this bedroom issue that mm. I've talked about. Mm -hmm. But government has to intervene there. Yeah, not in the bedroom, but on behalf of the mother, true, and the child, because if they don't, gender-based violence will, and then they must intervene on the men side as well. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a change in the curriculum in the syllabus mm. that confronts this evil that okay. we have. Yeah. So that children 
grow up understanding this problem mm. and relating to it differently. Yeah. And we are avoiding that because it's too painful to talk about it. Yes. So we, we, we shouldn't continue to avoid it. So when children pass, you need a degree. Mm -hmm. They only suffer 10% unemployment. Mm. But they begin to be productive assets immediately. Mm. Then you increase the taxes so that you go and finance education. Mm -hmm. You will be, have a bigger tax ratio, tax rate, tax tax base, mm -hmm. and then uh, you finance the streams of people that come through. That's what Korea did. Are you saying South Africans will be willing to pay more tax if they knew for sure that it'll educate majority of South Africans? Now you need a grand model. Yeah, I'm sure the Africaners were convinced by the. Uh, smarts mm. and the bail because they could show future proof around ESCO, around ISCO, around this and show them the benefit. Mm. They ran a survey, a study continuously uh, of the, the poverty of the Africana mm. uh, under a series of uh, the Carnegie mm. uh, reports. And based on that, they acted and reacted on those. Mm. Huh. So the Africaners could do, could sacrifice and do whatever needed to be done, including imposing apartheid, because they said, if we do this apartheid thing, we your life will be fine. Will be different. Yes. So, so, so apartheid at its core was a solution to a model. It was a mo it was, it a, was a, a, a model, model that solved a, a, a problem. problem. Yeah. Yes. That said, uh, we can the, solve poverty. And, and, and the, it was there was research and everything dedicated to it. Yeah. So. There is very little research that we do in South Africa, or at least discussion at the intellectual level, at cabinet level, to deal with this, uh, you know, mission critical mission issues. Mm. It, the, the, interesting, we, we talk about apartheid. There's somewhere where you are quoted as saying apartheid was a apartheid state was a developmental state, it, but only for the few. But it, at its core, it was a developmental state. It was a developmental state, and yeah. China uh, actually didn't necessarily copy it, mm. but Korea did. China had all this, uh, uh, the ever normal granary. And they had set the Confucius philosophy at the center, which was developmental anyway. Yes. yes. So the apartheid philosophy was developmental, but for the whites. Mm. And you see the designs, you see the rise of the infrastructure, mm. you see everything in it, their diplomacy was all development, a developmental state. Mm -hmm. It was not only a matter of orientation, mm -hmm. which is developmental, but it was interventionist, ensuring that it becomes developmental. So the SOEs mm -hmm. were instruments for development. Yeah. Now, I hear that uh, they want to uh, create uh, an SOE uh, what is it, a holding company. Mm -hmm. A holding company doesn't have policy responsibility. Mm -mm. That rests with the, the cabinet. Yeah. Now, if you look at how Mshorozi created uh, his cabinet, he said GTI disappears, Department of Trade and Industry, mm -hmm. and he created uh, economic development. Mm. And then he had uh, this planning mm. and monitoring. And Which then still exists. The, and then the, the planning commission. Now, he had split planning mm. completely by yeah. saying economic development and the, the, other, the other one was for social planning and all mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. economic development, instead of leaving planning and monitoring and evaluation in one space. Yeah. And leave trade and industry as is. Sure. Because when you have trade and industry, then the SOE's policies rest, rest here. Yeah. But uh, the execution of, the, of these institutions rests with... Uh, uh, minerals and energy mm -hmm. for ESCOM, uh, tra Transnet with transport. transport. But the coordination of the policies are here under a political head yeah. because those are policies. Huh. Now, this holding company, what, poli what policy power does it have? Does it go back to, to that we solve things by adding more, by inputting, than looking at, at, at the, at the impact. Based. Yes. yes, I don't know. We, we don't start from the impact. Yeah. We are solving it. I mean, if you look at the problem with ESCOM, quite frankly, is this. They wanted to know what the cost drivers are. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> yes, it's important to know the cost drivers. 
but uh, you, you, you don't start by killing the person before you find what diagnosing how the heart or the artery works. True. Yes. Yeah. You leave the body to, to understand, you have to understand that flow. Mm -hmm. Then your account, so now ESCOM is driven by account, accountancy. Mm -hmm. Not accountability. Mm -hmm. Accountancy. Yeah. Accountability is about ESCOM being a, an engineering hegemony, an engineering behemoth mm -hmm. with an economic function. That's the architecture of ESCOM. You've said it many times that uh, ESCOM's biggest loss was when it wasn't led by engineers. Engineers, yeah. Led by office bearers, by administrators, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you you you've shown history from here this time to this time. If you look at it, there's no power because look at the head. The, the, the head, there is. Yeah. And the engineers are saying this is where the problem is. That's the problem is. I mean, the 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 the, the predecessor, the the 1990, what is it, 85 to 89. Mm. The head of ESCOM, I'm, I'm, I'm missing the, the, the years, I can't remember yeah. the man. He, his memoirs are this, very interesting memoirs. Yeah. He says on that day, we had load shedding. We, we had a big problem of electricity. Yeah. Major, major problem. One supplier unit was not working. Mm. And he had his engineer in there. But he realized that uh, he's now taking six hours without solution. Yeah. He got out of the office, he went in there, jumped at the top and said, my friend, you keep that one, I'll keep the balance here. Mm. For three hours, they struggled with this. They got it right. Yeah. Be right, sir. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it can be argued uh, it, it, at the lot level. People were saying, but we hire engineers. We, we don't need to be engineers ourselves. We hire engineers. No, no, no. That outsourcing is, is wrong. Yeah. You see, when you don't have subject matter, you cannot lead an institution of subject matter. Yeah. You cannot hire an administrator to go and run statistics of Africa. True. Because then you have to have somebody interpreting things for him. He cannot confront the space of statistics. Naturally. Naturally. He doesn't have the, the a confidence of managing this. He doesn't know the people who are in that space. Yeah. So you can't. You can't have a, 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 a general administrator for a health for a, for a hospital. Mm, who's need, not a doctor. He's not a doctor. You need somebody who understands medicine. Yeah. However, we also know that these people that are prof professionals have a very narrow mind. True. But you need now to go and take them to business schools so mm. that they can open up. Yeah. Then you'll see them excel. I mean, when I got appointed, Trevor Manuel said, but yeah, I think you, your leadership skills are fine. Mm. But there is a management problem that way. <laughs> yeah. So we'll take you to Harvard. And I went to Harvard. Mm -hmm. what, what did you study? Uh, no, no, there was uh, this program of, of, of uh, the, 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 the management, okay. executive management, okay. uh, executive leadership programs yes. at Harvard. I benefited a lot from there mm. because mm. I knew that uh, in terms of management, I'm half half. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I mean, when I got appointed, my priorities was leadership in statistics, leadership in technology. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, leadership in geography. Mm -hmm. Those were my three key core areas. Yeah. Then, uh, well, administration, uh, and, audits, and, and all these and other pe things. And people management uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, there. Well, it was there in terms of uh, improving the skills. <laughs> okay. Uh, people management through the skills. Mm. But uh, these other things were, you know, at the tail end. The soft issues. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> politics and, uh, and the audits were the last things. Those, uh, those were the five prioritize mm. statistics geography and technology and then politics and the uh, audits were yeah but and then suddenly we found that oh my god there are these disclaimers here this this, this that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. now you have to understand that stuff and uh, that was a good decision that i was taken there mm. because i could quickly move into those things and then i also had a, an advisor uh, a, a retiree from statistics Canada. he said You'll not be praised for good statistics. You know, that's your work. Mm. But you'll excel when your audits are fine and the management oh, yes. of political interface, yeah. you excel. Now, by good the, advice. By, yes, <laughs> I mean, good, completely good advice. Yeah. Then we went into project management, included project management 
as a training program, mm -hmm. as they say. Uh, uh, and uh, once we did that, it meant that we are dealing with these issues of audits mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. that. Uh, and political interface, yes. well, strategically, I had to start my column yes. in 2002. Because you knew... Because I knew that yeah. I have to communicate the message and in order to communicate that message effectively, uh. you need to continue making sure that the boundary from the <laughs> castle is clear. Is cleared and getting bigger and bigger. You oh, push okay. that boundary. Or oh, you needed it to you be need, further. You, you needed it further so that anybody who comes and tries to attack the castle, you can see them. You from can the see from the fire and you will <laughs> deal with them before they reach the castle. <laughs> so this uh, column that I started did yeah. that very excellently. So that was good for political management. Yeah. Tell me, though, what, you know, having done this type of work for so long, what preoccupies you now in terms of, let me phrase it differently, what keeps you up at night about the challenges that South Africa is facing? It's the challenges that South Africa is, challenging, is, is facing now. Because I'm saying, I have an institution that I had led for a long period of time. It's, it's shown. I mean, I, I, I use this uh, thing that uh, Professor Makhoba in 2004, mm. uh, in Sunday time, starts with uh, affirmative action gone wrong. Mm. The first thing is, I don't want to condemn affirmative action, but I was not in affirmative action. A point yeah. No. yeah. I fought CSS right from the beginning, mm. and I came out showing that in order to lead this organization, it has to be led this way. Mm. So when I came in there, I was already a leader mm. Mm. of note. Yeah. Because uh, I had shown mm. from what I had done mm. what was going to happen. But when you get into a system that is so bad mm. in terms of narrowness, and I must say Mark did well for the five years that he was there, 95 mm. uh, to 2001, 2000. Yeah, he, he actually went and asked for me from Northwest. And I mm. said, yes. I mean, <laughs> and then I had to run the census, 1996 yeah. census. Yeah. And that was creating a new institution. Yeah. So I had the responsibility to create this new institution. <laughs> For five years, I was creating that new institution. Wow. So when I came in, I was ready to govern mm. and to lead. Yeah. So the economic statistics still had a lot of problems. Mm. And mistakes were made there. Lots of things were. So we had to start scratching and tearing that part. Mm -hmm. And as we tore that part, the biggest problem I had was, and this was the year when I was sent to Harvard, the CPI. Mm -hmm. So I was not around to watch the CPI. Mm -hmm. And people were complaining about it. What, and, that uh, it doesn't that, reflect? That it, that it doesn't add up. Yeah. And when Trevor Manuel came from, uh, I remember, oh, no, before Trevor Manuel, I visited uh, Tito mm. Boeni to tell him about my advisor that is coming and we want to fix the economic statistics mm. from Canada, this retiree who was okay. uh, almost 80 years or 75 years old. So as we left, he said, ah, but statistician, what about the CPI? Mm. Uh, but the PPI's producer price index is fine, but mm. the CPI, I said, oh, governor, no, 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 there's no problem here. Yeah, I don't think uh, you are correct. Mm. So Trevor Manuel comes from the is this thing meetings of uh, March, mm. comes straight to my office and say, "Buddy, there's something wrong here." He said, "No, Minister, it can't be there's nothing wrong here. What was wrong?" Mm. And then I commission graphs and I go to his office. I say, "You see, there's nothing wrong." Mm. <laughs> but then we are unsatisfied. He said, "Hey, let's go and scratch a bit." He scratch. He find, "Oh my God!" So <laughs> the next day I call him, "Hey, Minister, where are you?" <laughs> He says, I'm in Cape Town. Why? He said, I'm flying out. Yeah. You need to talk. There was a big boo-boo on the CPI. Whoa. But in part, it's because the Treasury didn't give us funds to run a survey which estimated the component of housing. Mm. So we mm. had to just project. Sure. So there was this, but I had to take the bigger blame because mm. I'm the statistician. Of course. Yeah. You know. So... Um, then there were other things as we are trying to transform the economic statistics. Mm. So Professor Mahoba writes that uh, affirmative action affirmative action gone wrong. Can you imagine if this man was heading ESCOM? 
ጆጆ transnet uh, saa uh, he mentioned these science councils and mm, all these mm, other mm. where would we be when we are led by this kind of person yo so i have a very good answer for him and i repeat this all the time and i say i, I actually appreciate that he asked that question mm. because all those institutions if they were led by myself they would be like state sa yes <laughs> currently that, that's the answer yes you would have left because, them in a better because shape because i took time yeah. to understand i took time to train people i took time to ensure that political management is tops yes and communications is tops and i took time to ensure that my staff understands mm. why quality and that's why my columns even today still write about mm. the importance of that institution or institutions of statistics and the particular statistics as a conduit of trust you you've answered that a question that says what keeps you up at night and that's your answer it 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 has a lot to do with with legacy it has mm. a lot to do with with the work of of stats sa uh, but if you broaden that approach and that question and say in relation to south africa and south africans uh well we as you see I talked about uh, this economic modeling academy and what I did mm. and the research work that led me to ADRS. Yes. And uh, in that time I tried to bring the ADRS tools to to government. Yeah. yeah but uh, this was resisted and uh, almost rejected. Mm. Then I said but what do we do? I mean this is the wealth that we need. Mm. And that kept me up at night. I got uh, appointed as a professor of practice at UJ. Okay. and uh, they agreed to this school but uh, you know when you go down to the heads of departments uh, <laughs> bringing a new entity uh, there is always sibling rivalry and uh, you know kimango uh, so things didn't work <laughs> that well there yes. so we decided that no this thing has to be established outside any university because each time we tried a university we saw that this thing will happen mm. we have established it outside university okay we provide online training and south africa has 10 best models mm. and one of those is one that will dis- ar- ar- address the district development model mm. and one of the tricks in that district development model is work that was done by dr murudu mm. at uh, the center for regional and urban innovation and statistical exploration mm. in 1992 coming to this cruise center for regional urban, In 1992 I went to we were discussing with professor uh, Kahimbara who was my uh, technical director I was the executive director of Bobs Uptazwana Statistics mm. and president Mangope had discussed decided on a Satswa option mm. which would take Tabanzo uh, up to Pretoria okay. so so this intrigued us he said but this thing doesn't make sense mm. So one woman Susan Ace who was working with us there's another story around this outsourcing thing but I'll not touch it today. Mm. It started in Bob as well and it started weakening the capacity of Bubtswana government to deliver okay. yeah. because they outsourced to Ernst and Young mm. a lot of things finance and so on. Sure. And we re- I ref- we refused he said mm. our work will not be outsourced. So Susan Ace and you you clearly won that battle. I, I won that battle. Yeah. Susan Ace was sitting there listening to us. she had she was working for Ernst Young but mm-hmm. was good in SAS mm-hmm. and he said no 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 this one we can keep mm-hmm. but outsourcing we are not this mm-hmm. one comes here mm-hmm. so she was listening to it. so the next day she comes with a general article i look at it i read it finish it and i ask her who is the author of this article mm-hmm. uh, of course the author is there but mm-hmm. I wa- she tells me i say i want his telephone number mm-hmm. I call him he answers I say I'm coming to see you tomorrow he said at the University of Portchester tomorrow. Yeah. So the next day I drive there. Come in and say why are you not teaching statisticians this thing? Mm. Because you can make better statisticians. You t- So he said how will I do it? I'm in the university I said look <laughs> we'll put money on the table mm-hmm. for you to do it here at the University of Portchester. Yeah. But the changes the changes it was occurring there were also divisions at Portchester. Of course. So this was undermined. Yeah. So each so we we got him to work with us on uh, demarcation mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that study still uh, in uh, you know that very very important mm-hmm. in terms of uh, determining 
the 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 spatial the space economy of South Africa. Yeah. Because it was based on magisterial districts. Okay. Which is homogeneous rather than uh, mm. and particularly so for the areas that were outside white South Africa. Yes. All those were homogeneous. Mm. And they couldn't be space economies no. uh, in relation to that. So th th that was the, the essence of what I wanted statisticians to study. Mm. 2007, I thought we had gone there. The person we were fighting with had retired. Yeah. So 2007, <laughs> we thought we'll get there. 92 to 2007. Sure. Roger Stroom is still resistant. Stellenbosch got wind mm. of this in 2010. Did they adopt it? They passed it through Senate, created the center, gave him the, the freedom of the city. Mm. We started the Center for Regional and Urban Innovation and Statistical Exploration. Wow. And the very first year, 2011, when we were running the census, risk census is here. I actually sent 10 of my top managers, a number of them with PhD, Whoa. to go and do this thing. Mm. That has been itching me. Mm. For, a, for a long, long time. And uh, the, 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 the now SG, I said, hey man, look, you know, <laughs> transition and succession are important. Mm. You better go yeah. and make sure that this program is bedded and executed. Because he had all the other senior people there, mm. but somebody had to make sure that the politics of it, of embedding these people there, is are dealt with. And who mm. knows? When I leave, you might just... <laughs> <laughs> so, Shabi Murudu yeah. looks at Zif theory. Mm. And in his Zif, Shabi is the man who came with ADRS and said, ADRS provides the best. Mm. The Zif paper that he wrote unlocks what Asga was doing in terms of defining these things in space. Mm. Mm. Because the Zif talks about the relationship of Cities, the hierarchy of cities. Okay. And, yes. the, and the municipal. Then he identifies municipalities and everything. And that thesis, mm. because after we actually appointed ADRS to work with us, mm. then we opened the files and ADRS was able to unlock wow. what can now be the district development management mm. model. That is based on one plan, national, provincial, district, and municipal. Mm -hmm. using the sophisticated tools that respect the laws of motion of mm. economics. This is, and for me, mm. it is this continuous innovation that, that stays sits with in, you. That stays with me. <laughs> I'm looking at the technologies now, um, these devices, yeah. they collect information. Now people are monetizing that information when it must be public good mm. and in full knowledge that uh, information is non-rival. Uh, in the sense of economics. Yeah. Uh, the more of it used, the more people can use it. Everybody else, uh, everyone uh, benefits. Everybody benefits. Yeah. So uh, it's a non-rival uh, product. It's not like this water. When I've drank it, it's, you it's, can't do it. Yeah, no, yeah, it's can, gone. Yes, I can't can, can use it. You can't it. use it. it yes. is. There's somewhere where I found where you speak of uh, a failed state mm. and you speak of black and white uh, states. Uh, and you, there's a lot of information that you say, but don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you. Has a black government, a government run by black people, failed? Or is, is race a factor in this, in this context? I think the context that I was making was that uh, we end up being condemned by others who are looking at us, mm. that blacks cannot run things. And once that cult and culture is risen or rises in the minds of people, mm. then we have a serious problem mm. as black people. I mean, uh, when I was in New York, uh, I met with uh, Professor Surab mm. uh, Sina, the vice chancellor. We had a meeting with him. Um, I, 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 I'm a professor of practice at UJ. Mm. Uh, we are now going to a different scope. Mm. Of course, when they appointed me, the whole thing was about how do you deal with statistical leadership? How do you write a book around this? 
and then I caused them a deviation to look at planning because I said, hey, I think we don't have the, the, the possibilities of planning here. Mm -hmm. So I, I shifted, moved that way. And uh, now I've spent all these three years creating this economic modeling academy mm -hmm. stand. Now we are back to the book project. Yeah. But when I was there, I told him that, I, you know, I'm going to Pennsylvania uh, to, 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 to Penn University, mm. Philadelphia. My friend Tukufu is getting married. Mm. So he said, no, I'm also going to Philadelphia. But for only, I said, no, no, you should meet Tukufu. Mm. Uh, and you'll see on his uh, page, he's posted that he's never seen an incredibly good, great person. Mm. Uh, Tukufu is a Lassie um, professor. Mm. And uh, he was, he, he said of demography, but he's, he's all over the map. Now he's looking at race okay. issues mm. and explains this. And uh, he's inviting him and his wife mm. uh, to UJ. Okay. And Tugufu, in 1997, we started what is called Africa, Africa Census Analysis Project, okay. uh, which has created a number of PhDs in demography mm. across the continent, mm. uh, trained at uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and he resuscitated um, files of censuses that were real lost there that are unreadable. Mm. He's got all that. He's re revitalized them. And the Africans went to Pennsylvania to study mm. uh, in his... So, uh, so he'll be here. But he talks on this issue of race mm. uh, and uh, discusses how over generations, particularly as an American, black American, mm. He sees all this, um, and then he's written, um, he's put a documentary, Africa Post-Colonial. Mm. Uh, I arranged that he would talk to President Becky yeah. in 2008. Okay. Uh, but uh, that's when the president was being unseated in mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. He was here, ready to go. Oh, no. <laughs> and he couldn't. So when yeah. I was there representing all the Africans mm. uh, at his wedding, I said, man, the mission is still not complete. You've got to come back to interview President Beji, yeah. President Zuma, President Ramaphosa to conclude this Africa post-colonial mm -hmm. project that you ran. Uh, so he'll be here, but now uh, S S Surab mm -hmm. has made it easier by inviting him to mm, the University to UJ. of UJ yes. so that he can also conclude that. So. These are multiple things that are, are running. Mm. I run Pan-African Institute for Evidence, mm. uh, and uh, this is about why are African politicians using statistics as a, 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 as a, as a support structure uh, and not as, uh, I mean, uh, they use it like a, a, a drunkard who uses a lamppost mm. for support instead for using it as enlightenment. <laughs> yes. And that's, that, that, that's my mission. Yeah. Mm. So, so you would say Africans, black Africans, did not fail or do not necessarily fail to run a government. They have equally ability to do it. And I say this because mm. if you look throughout Africa, mm. Africa is not a, a beacon of, of glory and success in most parts there's glimmer of hope in certain areas. If we were to, if we were to write a thesis that says Africans can run a government successfully, would that thesis come out with a positive out outcome? I think the evidence will say, no, they haven't. Yeah. But uh, probably as you collect the evidence, you will show how progress has been made necessarily. Mm out of a long history of colonialism and all this. Yeah. And therefore, they are on the ascendants, okay. on, the, on, the, on an ascendant path. Uh, if you look at Rwanda, Botswana, uh, those are really serious glimmers of hope. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, North Africa, Egypt, uh, with all the Mubarak and the others, mm -hmm. when you look at how they've deployed the state instruments to build uh, Egypt, Mm. Uh, like the military, the military they construct roads. Yeah. Yes, uh, they, they 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 are they are embedded in the economy. Wow, and they continue. Eh? They Even continue now, to do it. Now, now they're they building a, a city. If it's not uh, done yet, a city, yeah. a government city. That's that's what Egypt is doing. It's, yeah, uh, I mean there are there are statistics offices. It's called it's Capmas Center for 
uh, public mobilization and statistics. Mm. So it's a central agency yeah. for public mobilization and statistics. And it generates that from the wars that Egypt had to, to work, mm -hmm. fight. So public mobilization had to be an activity of statistics so wow. that people will know how much is required for this, for that, for that, for okay. that. Okay. That's okay. where it comes from. So I, I used to, I was intrigued by it. <laughs> and, uh, so um, I, I would say that uh, South Africa had a possibility. Yeah. I mean, we are going to uh, Cote d'Ivoire mm. uh, with my, with uh, the current statistician general. And he didn't have a, a, a diplomatic passport. I was okay. traveling on diplomatic passport. Yeah. So we get there and we get to, to, to Ouagadougou because the direct connection to Cote d'Ivoire couldn't come. Mm, mm. But when you get to Kagadugu, they say, no, no, you need a visa. Hmm. And you don't have one. And uh, I can travel with pub and yeah, and, diplomats. Uh, yeah, diplomats. Yeah. yeah, that's 2007. And he can't cross because now he's traveling on a government mm. passport or his private one, I can't remember. So it's 11 o'clock at night. Mm. <laughs> because uh, we had to stay in Dakar for a long time. Mm. But uh, now we say we can't be staying here. We have to be in uh, uh, Abidjan. Mm. So, um, what do we do? What do we do? So this guy looks looks at the passport finally. He says, ah, Africa suit. Africa, South Africa. Yes, yes. Bafana, Bafana, Mandela, Mandela. Go. He said, I'm on leave. From tomorrow uh -huh. but at six o'clock i'll be here to give you a right of passage wow that's what south africa had. and mandela says don't disappoint the world because it expects a lot out of you yeah at that time we had not disappointed the world yet huh. that privilege it's gone it cannot happen again i was i was in the u.s with uh, wilson kosi of metro yeah. fm uh, we were in the same taxi uh these these yellow cabs mm. And he forgot his his bag. Yeah. Uh, the taxi dropped us off where we were, the hotel we were going at, and we got into the hotel. A few minutes later, we get a call from reception saying there's a gentleman at the reception who are looking looking for us. And we go downstairs, and it's a taxi driver. We recognize him as the guy that dropped mm -hmm. us off, and he says, uh, "One of you left this bag. I couldn't help but check." Who is it? Because yeah, when I yeah. when he found it, it was just another bag mm -hmm. in his car. He opened. Remember Wilson, uh, the B in Wilson goes is Bafana. Bafana, yeah. And immediately saw that, and it was Bafana. He said, Ah, the South that, African that, guy. Yes, Bafana, Bafana. Yeah. And he was when he got to us, he said, Bafana, Bafana. Bafana. Said, uh, yeah. The Bafana, Bafana reference came up again, and it it came up in celebration. Of the country, the country where we're from, yes, yeah. and 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 he tells the story often, Wilson. And now, when you say it, it reminds me of that story, and it also reminds me. It, it reminds all of us, I guess, of the glory that we once celebrated, celebrated. as a as a as a country. And you say we've lost it. We have lost it. Yeah. I mean, uh, look at uh, Robben Island. Yeah, well, it's a. Uh, uh, it will be privatized soon. Yeah, and you lose the political essence of struggle. Yeah. It's history. It will be wiped. Yes. I mean, countries like Ghana have still maintained the uh, uh, the castles, slave castles. Mm. And uh, they have maintained them throughout, whether they were poor or not. They were well catered for so yeah. that people don't forget. Even Rwanda has a, has a, a memorial, memorial yeah. of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the war and the genocide. Yes, the genocide, yes. Yeah. We are not taking care of Robben Island. Yeah. As an example yeah. of what we're not taking care of. Care of. I mean, look, let me tell you something. You know, this issue of the key, of Madiba's key, uh -huh. that was about to be sold. Yeah. I can show you the conversation that I had. Yeah. I saw it on the news, mm. in a newspaper. I got into overdrive. <laughs> I called Hatang. Mm. This. He was in Mozambique. Mm. I said, Chief, what is happening? I called Reverend Chikan. I said, Reverend Chikan, what is happening? Mm. I called the 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 the, 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 the uh, Badlander, mm. the, the 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 advocate Badlander. Mm. 
I said, man, what, what do we do? This thing is going to be to auction on Monday. Yeah. And it's Friday today. He then gave me the references mm -hmm. of in the law. Mm. Then I called Minister Nati, who was in the U.S. I said, Minister, are you aware that this key is going to be sold? Mm. Our heritage is about Our to be sold. Our heritage is going to be sold. Yeah. Huh. And then I called Kiza, who was the, the director general. That was stopped. So we can do more of that. Now, how do citizens, ordinary citizens, yes. have to catch this thing? I mean, where is the the central operation of government around mm. heritage. But of course, citizens must be alert to all these things. That's true. But that key was yeah. going to be sold for two, some two million pounds or one million Someone pounds. Someone will just display it and say, yeah. and show it to friends. To friends and say. That this is Mandela's it's prison key, key. Prison key. It's with me. Yeah. And then what? I, 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 I stopped that thing. Yeah. You have to acknowledge your proximity to power. And you said it. How can an ordinary me uh, uh, do something of that sort? It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. So the, as civil servants, as uh, public servants, yeah. we are public servants at all times. Yes. We never leave stations. Office. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I, my struggle at the moment. I don't leave office. I'm. What do you do now? Besides, well, uh, I'm aware, Director of Economic Modeling Academy. Uh, I work with Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Okay. And uh, there I can see the, the fruits of how we can deal with uh, social compacts. Mm -hmm. It's quite possible from experiences in managing poverty multidimensionally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Amartya Sen talks about uh, uh, empowerment, uh, you know, uh, and uh, says that human human lives are battered in all kinds of ways mm. because through poverty of all kinds. And uh, in order to understand this phenomenon, we have to look at it from a multidimensional point of view. Ah. So uh, when I was at SESA, we started this in 2012, mm. Mm. 2010. Yes, mm. I think uh, Sabina Alkir, who is the director of Oxford Poverty, uh, started making overtures to us mm. and we started measuring poverty multidimensional. That's why I'm saying if you look at the multidimensional script of mm. uh, unemployment, electricity, that's the multidimensional. Yeah, that, yeah. Those are the dimensions that we use to see what is the driver of poverty. And we have to attack these things simultaneously mm. uh, to deal with it. So I met OFI, Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Mm as a research associate. And, you, and, and you're saying with, with understanding poverty, you are able to, to empathize yeah. correct, correctly. And that's the empathy where we started, that uh, we need that empathy. Yeah. Yes. Because you can't, you can't empathize correctly if you don't understand <laughs> my, my type of poverty. But yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You don't know what my type is. Point, yeah. is. Wow. So that's what, preoccupies your time. That's what preoccupies my time. And uh, when we met in New York, we were working on this and uh, we are looking. And now with ASGA, ADRS, mm. uh, in 2018, yeah. I, I brought ASGA and Sabina together. Uh, not together physically. Mm. But I said, guys, in my lecture at Oxford yeah. that I was delivering on on multidimensional poverty. I said, look, this tool must be forward-looking. Mm. Because at the moment, it's backward-looking. Okay. You, it's it's, you, it's you historic. historic. Yeah. We need to make this forward-looking. Uh, we need to look at tools for that. Yeah. So at the time, I had already ADRS. So I said to Sabina, you can look at the models of ADRS. You can look at your what you are having. Mm. I also went to CRUS, Center for Regional and Urban Innovation, okay. and Statistical Exploration. I said, you three institutions that I have experience with, uh, you can actually collaborate on this project to make uh, this thing more dynamic. Uh, uh. So, uh, well, you know, these people are held by institutions. Hey. I'm uh, the only one who is free <laughs> moving that way and that way. That's probably the challenge they have against you. This <laughs> free soul wants us <laughs> wants to... To, to do all kinds of things. So, Asda <laughs> now has completed... Mm that forward looking and I was saying wow. to Sabina when we were in New York I said Asga has completed this now mm. 
Mm. We can embed multidimensional poverty to look at macroeconomic issues yeah. and their impact on poverty mm. and mm. multidimensional poverty. Sure. So we now have the instruments mm, to, so for South to Africa look to, to, the look at, to look into the future. Huh. I mean, we are just launching that now. Jeez. So, uh, and then I was talking to the director of a, a Center for Regional and Economic, Center for Regional and uh, Urban and Regional Eco, uh, uh, that thing at uh, at uh, Cruz mm. at Stellenbosch. Mm. Uh, we've trained 110 M field people. Mm. A number of them still at Stellenbosch. They say 20, I think, wow. have, have, might have gone. Mm. But it shows the depth that Stellenbosch has yeah. of profession. Do you know, it's it's, it's in incredible because every time we hear numbers, whether it's a uh, the number of death, the number of this, the number of that, it's all stats they say, mm. essentially. Yes, it is. You're, you're the, uh, uh, well, stats they say that you left and that you formed essentially and mm. made into this giant machine it remains such an important tool in our society. And I, I wish and pray that we don't just look at the numbers and move on. There's a video where you're, you're, you're doing a presentation wearing a very nice suit and you're holding a hat mm. uh, in that there are politicians on the on, on the, the panel, yeah, on the panel. The, the, yeah, the, yes, uh, black BBC, exactly yes. that, yes, yeah. and and it's it, one or two were interested in what you had to say, mm. and others they couldn't be bothered. <laughs> they were on their phones, scrolling their phones, mm. and I and I remember thinking, and it's something that you you've said earlier in this conversation that. It's not the numbers, it's what we do with them, mm. in essence, you know. We, you can go out to, to the field and get the numbers. And, and w once you know, like, the, 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 what's that, the donkey yeah. that, that, was, well, that was not de delivering. It's very, yes, yeah. yes, you get to understand why. And once you know why, you're able to solve the problem. And you can translate that into human beings, or all the animal kingdom. Absolutely. But, uh, uh, something that has happened. Yes. Yeah. Do, do you identify as a, and I say this with clear misunderstanding, as a Mosotu, Walesotu, or as a South African, was South Africa, or you're just a, a, a person who ad, a, occupies both nations comfortably? Uh, I, I think uh, the, the, the unity of the nations is very important because yeah. um, I appreciate South Africa having given me the top position mm. uh, when I'm not a national. Mm. Uh, of course, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd naturalized, so yes. I qualified. But I, I don't think I qualified because I naturalized. Mm. I qualified because I had a conduct mm. towards South Africa. Yes. By the way, I left Lesotho running away. So, <laughs> oh, yes. yes yeah, so, so it's not like you, at the time, you couldn't just come back. <laughs> yes, I couldn't go back to Lesotho. Yes. But, and this is where I, I it became home. Mm. So mm. I have a, a great debt of gratitude mm. to South Africa. That's why when I see Robben Island treated in that kind of way. It affects you just as it much. It affects me so badly because I'm sure Stetsa say it might just be treated that way. Yeah. Where water accumulated, it will always accumulate all over. So fighting for institutions that still show mm. is the most important thing so that you can build those on top of them. Yeah. There's no use to have a, a brighter candle there in the midst of darkness because finally they'll come for it too. Absolutely. So, and, and it stands <laughs> out. <in the> darkness. <laughs> yes, it, it does. They'll come for it. Yeah. So what you have to do is to increasingly create the boundary yeah. farther and farther away from the castle and bring others in make, so that you build. Make as many candles yes. so there's no one who can... Come in, they just come Yeah, they're just too many. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. no. So, Omosoto, um, Walesoto. Omosoto, Walesoto. Uh, fortunately, Lesotho now uh, accepts dual citizenship. Yes. I mean, I, I was invited to Lesotho to be uh, by the Prime Minister after 1993. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, man, I want you to be uh, the Chief Electoral Officer here, mm -hmm. Chief of IEC. Yes. He said, you know, I arrived in Mabatu, heading to Botswana, but Mabatu held me back. And <laughs> you I were very be, close. I would, have, I would have joined you there. Yeah. I need six months to do assignments 
a number of them related to training of staff mm. that I found untrained, that I have now trained. Mm. And that stuff, you know, it's the one that I used to come across to to, to the national office. True. Yes. Yeah. So at the time I said, I need to complete this training. Mm. You can give me six months, I'll be done. And then I'll come. Yeah. Uh, mind you, now I've just acquired citizenship. Mm. South African. Yeah, South African. Yes. And I know that you don't allow dual citizenship. Mm. I, I've rescinded basically your citizenship. Yeah. I said, <laughs> well, that we can deal with. But this one of six months, Mufuke. Mm. Uh, <laughs> democracy cannot wait. Cho -cho. So I was so committed completing the training of our staff mm -hmm. that uh, I couldn't go back to Lesotho having not completed that task. Yes. Because that became home. Because then we were working towards the 1994 elections. 1994 elections, 95 uh, census of South Africa. Yes. And I needed to have left because I'd already started taking shots yeah. at the National Office of Statistics. You told you, I mean, uh, uh, 95, uh, he said, I'm persona non grata. 94, yeah, 94. <laughs> so you've been persona non grata? Oh, yes. I mean, I had uh, convened a meeting in Rui Khrond okay. of all RDP offices uh. <laughs> to tell them about, to discuss about, amongst other statistics, the role of statistics in post apartheid South Africa. Mm. Nothing so, wrong with that. Yes. We, we, now I invite Detroit to come and say, what will be the role of statistics? You are the chief person. So he writes and says, oh, no, no, that is inadvisable. Uh -huh. I advise you not to host that. I wrote back to him. I said, no, no, no. I wasn't asking for an opinion of whether I should host or not. <laughs> or permission. <laughs> I was asking you to participate. Yeah. I'll give you the report once we are done. Yeah. Because he had uh, invited, I wrote the report, and one of the resolutions was his position must be advertised. <laughs> And that day, no they, tell said, they, 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 they said he didn't finish his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no tell Lamar. No, no, you, you, you need to... <laughs> see, when you have headed cattle, yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, you, you, you should use Tsun te mm. techniques. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is Tsun 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 is the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, philosopher who says, when the enemy is very strong, I mean, to, to know when to attack and when to, okay. to attack. How does that apply in, in heading cattle? Uh, you you learn how to disguise. Uh. You, you learn how to disguise because you have to catch the cow or milk it uh, okay. or catch it unawares. So you, you, disguise is the most important thing there so mm -hmm. that you can shock <laughs> it. Or when you are uh, trapping uh, uh, beds. Uh. You have to dis disguise. You can't come to the beds no. to go that, way, that yeah. way. So, all these techniques are strategic. I mean, I, if if you think about strategy now, yeah. heading cattle. When they you go into open fields, mm. new fields, the cattle will run through that up to the end. Mm. Just eat. Mm. <laughs> Almost. I mean, uh, this uh, screening they do. Yeah. The next day they'll. Come start from here. They'll not go okay. that fast. Either. Oh, they they want to. They look at the lay lay of the land. Okay, okay. And when I looked at strategy, I said, "Oh, so this is what we are taught. Cattle <laughs> taught me this long time ago." <laughs> Jeez. So Detroit, leading, dealing with Detroit needed those kinds of mm, tactics. Jeez. Mm. Why why were you kick, kick, when you said you were running out of Lesotho? What was the reason for that? As um, as we conclude, you know, I. Uh, you know, these things uh, always have a beginning, and uh, you know, mm. but uh, the, the long and short of it is a friend of mine. I, I was not given scholarship. Okay. And that's why I'm so passionate of funding everybody. Mm, mm, and yeah. I, I didn't get scholarship because in 1967, and now that's nine years later when I have to go to university, mm. my father had a toothache. He had to wake up to attend a minister's in Bizo. Mm hmm to go and ask him. And that's what I don't hear, public asking the minister. Mm, mm. So the minister, Manyeri comes, he's holding a pizza, he's, and my, at the end of his presentation, uh, we also left cattle ourselves, we came to the pizza. Okay. Sat there, listen to the minister. So my father asks, you know, you have uh, deprived 
children bursaries. Hmm. And you said it's because their fathers were belonging to the BCP, Pasul and Congress Party. Okay, the opposition. The opposition. Yeah. And that's a wrong thing. You cannot go and punish children uh. of this nation in that kind of way. So Manyeri blabs the same argument again back. Uh. Manyeri says, oh, no, you see, you guys said, uh, and then there are people there uh, singing, and uh, not singing, but uh, embarrassed by my father's direct question, mm. uh, including the 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 the, 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 the the, the Muruti, mm, mm. who was the overall overseer of the school, okay. because the school was a parish school. Yeah. Uh, but, so Manieri gives this kind of question, and my father just bursts <laughs> with anger at the minister. Yeah. And then the villagers started singing, and that was the end of the pizza. Oh, no. Yes. So <laughs> 1975, uh, at high school, mm. uh, Zimbabwe appears in the Randale Mail in around October. Randale Mail. Mm. He's saving his nobkiri and he says, I'll return. Yo. Uh, the whole campus went in, up in flames. We are so excited. <laughs> and then the next thing, the police came, arrested some of uh, our guys. Mm. And we were going to write the Cambridge Overseas School Certificate. Yeah. And he's written in Malaysia, Singapore, UK. And, and then we said, forget it. For as long as our comrades are arrested, we are not mm. writing. Yo. So they were released a week before the exams, and then we went to write. Wow. Now we pass, and then these guys don't give me scholarship. Hey. It builds from all that. So, so you were carrying the sins of your father. Yes, I'm carrying the sins of my father. I'm carrying my own sins uh, of uh, demonstrating mm. because uh, we are planning with another guy to go and uh, finish mm. off this guy who went and reported us to, in <laughs> government. Yeah. Uh, but he had a long fled and he never came back to school. That was the end of him in that school. So I didn't get a scholarship. Mm. Now, but all, I had a, where I stayed with a, a professor at university. But, you know, it's on campus, it's boring. Mm. So I get uh, to stay with two guys. Mm. One of them becomes the ambassador. Mm. Uh, becomes uh, We work together. We even went to the minister to say we want military training. Uh, the minister dismissed this thing. <laughs> he realized that uh, this one's a... Uh, <laughs> you know, learn how to use guns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he, he was the leader of that process. Mm. But he, he covered me during that period when I didn't get scholarship. Finally, I got it. Yes. The Americans intervened. Okay. I got scholarship. Uh, the money was paid back. Although I was already eating on campus, so I had a bag of money. <laughs> so he is about to be killed. Mm, mm. This gentleman yes. who's, who's yes, giving you a safe, safe area. Yes, yes he's, he's, he, we are now out of university. Okay, yeah. But he's about to be killed. Uh. The wife comes to me, I had a car, and says, hey, drive us to Masiru. Mm. So my wife and I and my son, we go, no, no, my son was not there. Mm. He left him home. He was one year or two. Mm. We go to Maseru and uh, drop the wife. Mm. We get there. He's sleeping on a mattress this size. Yeah. And he knocked. He has his head this way. Hell, Mesh, what's happening? What's the man? So he dropped the wife. But as we sit there and about to leave, he say, hey, what's your plan? Mm. Asking goes, you? Yeah, I'm asking me. Okay. What's your plan? So, well, we have to cross early in the morning. Who's mm. going to cause you to cross? Yeah. He said, okay, tomorrow morning, four o'clock, I'll be here. Yeah. So that uh, we go to fix back. Cross mm. that. Four o'clock, we don't even go back to Roma. Now we stay in Maseru at my brother's house. Mm. Next morning, brr, help them to cross. Sure. His son had to be drilled to use my son's name. Whoa. Ask Abayes. Ask Abayes. <laughs> yes. So we drop them there. They cross. Yeah. 
Then he brought back home. Yeah. Oh, three days later, trouble. On For me. you? Oh, no. So, so you had to find ways. I had to find ways. And then I had to, I went home. I told my father and, you know, I told my father I slept home. Then the next morning, there's somebody sitting there. Then my father and my mother disappear. And this man had to do some things mm. for safe passage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me some concoction. Of course, yes. <laughs> and you managed. I You're managed. still here now. I mean, I'm sure because he was saying, no, no, you'll get a job, you'll get this thing, and apply it here. And then, of course, he uses terminology. Yes. Yes, such as, oh, you know, you... As you apply this thing, you must say the whites must love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's a reflection, eh? Yeah, so I had to apply this thing. And I I don't know where this man is, but if he sees me, he says, go and ask him. I told you. I told you, you'll succeed. You'll be fine. And you made it through to South Africa. Made it through. And well, it, well towards, to, 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 to Butatswana. Butatswana, we're at Costa. Okay. Uh, yes. the, 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 um, yeah. At that place, we had to park in the bridge, mm. apply this stuff. <laughs> and my friend who was, was driving me looks at me and says, well, you know, me, I didn't graduate. He didn't come for the graduation, but he passed. And yeah. I said, you, 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 you believe in this stuff? <laughs> so I said, that, look, uh, I can't disobey my father, my friend. Mm. So he's, he laugh a bit about it <laughs> all the time when we meet. <laughs> uh, he also had to flee after he helped. Yeah, because so the information was, probably goes spread mm, already. Spread. This is the guy. Mm. Wow. So that's so you how made I it ended. Yeah. Yes. And you've, yeah. you've made South Africa home. Yes, I mean, it's, 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 these are the, the kinds of things that are weighing very heavily on me when yeah. I, I see the nation going the way it is yes. going. Obviously, there are people who have sacrificed a million times more, more than I... Absolutely, I, uh, uh, yeah, those who went to Lesotho mm, for refuge, for refuge, yes, from yeah. South Africa mm. under similar circumstances, yes. running away from, from authority, yeah. you know, who were given a, a safe refuge and they tended mm. into something that we we can easily say as South Africans that we got the freedom we wanted. We wanted, yes. uh, and uh, you see Lesotho, ninety-three Lesotho gets freedom, South Africa gets freedom, ninety-four. Yes. it was inevitable that it would move in that kind of thing. Yeah. Although Mzumukhele is said to have been having, the Boers never trusted him. Mm, mm. And he never trusted them. Yeah, But he needed passage to get to Lesotho. Mm. That is why 93 and 94 occurred in the sequence. Yeah, that it did, it. yeah. Because, uh, and, and then he got the landslide. Ah, victory, victory. yes, yeah. exactly. So he carried the wishes and everything of the Basu. Oh, that's so true. So I had to leave home because <laughs> uh, we were singing, seeing him and saying, yeah. that's how my do you, do, you, do you still uh, wish, obviously, for a successful Lesotho as well? Because the challenges of Lesotho indirectly similar to South Africa. Oh, they are the same. Yeah. Uh, and uh, South Africa is learning very fast from Lesotho. Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, the elections and everything, you can see the all the, the shenanigans hey. that are happening here, the, the, the coalitions and Ooh. everything. South Africa is learning very fast from mm. uh, its neighbor. Yes. Yes. I usually say, so I say, well, you learn bad lessons <laughs> very fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the, 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 the solution in Lesotho and South Africa are tied. Mm, mm. and are tied to the solution in Swaziland as well. True. You can and say the uh, same about learning from Botswana equally. Yes. 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 I mean, uh, so we really need to think about regional integration and mm. what it implies. Yeah. Uh, Zimbabwe and Botswana have said now people can just use IDs to pass through the borders. Mm. So is Botswana and Swaziland. Um, this talks to what South Africa has lost. Mm -hmm. The rail to Maputo from Mozambique, Botswana, Swazi, Botswana, uh, Namibia, mm -hmm. Maputo, that's not been discussed with South Africa. Mm -hmm. It's done on its own. The AU had said, South Africa, you should construct the locomotives. Mm -hmm. Now, that thing of Bafana, Bafana, Mandela, Mandela is gone. Mm. And they can't trust us. 
And that's the problem. Yeah. And they cannot see us as a partner that is dependable and reliable. So we got to get out of this rut. Yeah. yeah so the relations are cementing around South Africa. Mm. They are happening. They are happening mm. without South Africa. But if, if, if there was a WhatsApp group uh, and we were there, now they've created another one. Another one that says, oh, no, leave this one. Yeah. So they, they, Once in a while. They can allow, allow us to go in. Yeah. So these are things that uh, we really have to think through and be on top of. Yeah. Uh, yes, we are entitled to our own mistakes, but uh, we are not entitled to our own foolishness, mm. which is not learning from any other's mistakes. mistakes. Yes, yeah. And equally, I think we are not entitled to permanent mistakes. Mistakes, yeah. No. <laughs> we can't. We can't. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. For Renault, he's, he's permanently... Permanently in, in crisis. When I was a child, uh, my uncle used to call me Alfred Furkirt. Mm. Uh, I was a very naughty, naughty yeah. little boy in the in the house. And fortunately, I, I was able to shed that... That, that naughtiness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I said you can't be permanently Alfred Furkirt. Yeah, no. It doesn't make sense. Um Mushomi, or rather the father to King Mushweshwe, mm. sent Mushweshwe to Mushomi. Yeah. Because he saw this permanent aggression, permanent mm. everything. And he said, well, there's leadership here. Mushomi, shape this man. Mm. There's and something. Very, yeah, there's a lot here. Yeah. yeah. So he had killed a few people as well. Yeah. So there's something in South something Africa. In, so <laughs> there's something that we need to go to Mutlomi and say, <laughs> what do you do with, with this, this? With this. Yeah. yeah. You are an incredible man. And believe me, the first time I earned a salary was through an organization you ran, Stats SA. Is that so? A census. Of uh, 96? Of the ni yes. I was one of the uh, the little big boys and girls in the township who were wearing this the white, yellow, yellow, yellow coat and who were... Uh, asking people all sorts of questions in yeah, the house. Where do you come from? Mami Lodi. I, I was in. I was in Mami Lodi. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, no. yeah, no, no, that's, <laughs> that's that was the first time I earned a, 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 a salary. I had a degree, a junior degree. Mm. Actually, no, no, no. I was too, I was working towards it. Yeah. Because uh, I was still. I, I I was literally in the last year of yeah. it. And I and there I was. Are you not the ones who marched to? Nah, the building. I wasn't militant enough. For uh, that uh, time. The people, the, the people from Mamilodi marched the building. They are trash built. What were they fighting for? For the payments. Yes. You remember, no, we, I... we we had a problem of uh, payments. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I remember that uh, they held our guy in uh, Limpopo hostage. The late Nyanga. So you know, it's a problem now. You can't pay these people. <laughs> what and was they... the problem? No, it had to do with. You had to print the checks. Okay. And okay. then deliver them. Then, yes. uh, you know, the, the, there's, a, there's a whole book on how you run the census and mm. the headaches. I mean, I do have that. <laughs> so now they say we want the checks. They say we'll ri drive to mm. to Pretoria to collect the checks. Yeah. We need, we'll take a car drive. I said, no, guys, it's too late. You can't. Mm. So this. On and off goes on for from seven to nine o'clock. At nine yeah. o'clock, I say, okay, I'll fax the check. Okay. They say, hooray. <laughs> so I say to Alphonse, Alphonse, he was the CFO. Uh. Where is the, I always see uh, the checks coming back here mm -hmm. that have been paid, uh, that are coming back for filing. Mm -hmm. Where are those checks? Or, or rather, I said, where is the checkbook so that we can write the amount okay. on a real checkbook mm. and then send two point something million rands? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He doesn't have the key. We try to call the woman who has the key. She doesn't have a cell phone. We don't know where she stays. Oh, no. So I said, Alphonse, I always see those checks coming back here. Mm. Uh, and they, also for me, I usually see the check coming from the bank of course. to come and reconcile. So, Said, show me the. She showed me. I said, okay, photocopy. This one. This one. Yes. <laughs> let's tip exit. Oh no. Yeah. oh, no. Now let's write the amount. Yes. <laughs> 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 Are you trying to, to come? The... We have to deal with that. Those people, they must receive the check. Yes. 2.8 million or 3 million. Uh, char. Pay to Standard Bank. Fax it. Mm. It arrived. Oh, 
There's man is here. Oh. <laughs> I said, Alphonse, tomorrow morning, first thing, we must go and get the real check and drive there. <laughs> <laughs> so you were buying time. Yes, I mean, <laughs> there, there was no way they would release this person or they will drive at night and they, they have accidents. Yo. So I faxed this check. I said, I'll fax it. I mean, they <laughs> applauded. They got it. <laughs> Wow, that I guess it's those tricks that are, that were needed as a you, leader. You, you need you need those. Is this guy one of the MPs? Yeah, Just in case, very difficult guys. Mm. So they are refusing us to, to to count. So I said, okay, fine, I'll fly you up here mm. because I can't come there. I wanted to come. <laughs> fly them. Yeah. Keep them here for three days. And you count. And the counting starts. <laughs> Send them back. <laughs> That's a very good trick. 2011. Yeah. The community doesn't want to be counted by us. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, give us your own. They do. But they are factions. Of course. Serious factions. So they are not satisfied with the children that have been, the emeritus that have been selected. Mm -hmm. So they say they don't want them. So they, 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 mm -hmm. They, they dislodged that plan. Mm. They said, okay, you can even bring your own. Yes. <laughs> I was there since morning. The day is running and uh, we are trying to resolve this. Uh. The factions' interests break. And I said to the team here, I said, guys, make sure that you send all the T-shirts for censors. Mm. Bring everything. <laughs> fly, it to, fly with it to, to, to Sakel. Yeah. For Sakel. Uh, the middle. Now, when these t-shirts arrived, it was almost sun sunset. Uh -huh. We opened, they came for the t-shirts, the meeting broke, uh -huh. we went into the village community to drop t-shirt by t-shirt. The next morning, they were all yellow. Red. Everyone. Everyone. Not even non-factional lines were, were no, visible. Was. <laughs> now, we resolved the issue of uh, the people, the children of the, the those emeritus uh, mm -hmm. come from community. So he said, no, no, we will not appoint them. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So we bring out the, the, the original appointees. Mm -hmm. So these girls argue and say, but what will happen to us? I said, but your community doesn't want to. What will we do? Yes. They don't want you to be to emerate them. Mm -hmm. Get off. Very aggressive. Sure. I wasn't taking any nonsense. Mm. So they get counted, we finish. <laughs> I come back. I invite these people who were not supposed to have count mm. and those who are advocating for them not to count. Sure. So I say, you know, uh, colleagues, thank you very much for allowing us to count. But, uh, you know, we have a, a matter here. We had a contract with these people that you said should not count you. Mm. We are obliged to pay them. Pay them. <laughs> hey, these guys say, but hey, we have... We have lost. I said, what have you lost? You got counted. Yes. But as a head of this, I have a matter here that I have to settle. Mm. That's called all. That's called all. But at the time, I was not going to show any mercy towards them. No. Not at all. I didn't want to give in any, any, because wow. if we did, they were still going to say, now we shouldn't count. Mm. So <laughs> this... The challenges, I, I, I can only imagine. Well, I, I was too young then, uh, but we counted. We were yeah. able to. No, 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 it was a nice We were able to yeah, count. Yes, uh, yeah. And we, I, mean, I remember, you know, I made friends, whom I'm still friends with mm. till today from, from that exercise, because we were able to get through the township and count a lot of people. No, it's, it's uh, my article talks to, to that Yeah. Uh, for tomorrow. Yes. That, uh, you know, we have a rare privilege of knowing the, inner mm. secrets yes. of society. Yeah, it's the mm. inner workings. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you can only do that when you are trusted. You can't do that when you don't have the trust of anyone. I always do a fist bump when we end the oh, show. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Eh? Good. Uh, K -K -K Dr. Parilo Hotla is an incredible South African who's a... Who's a a, a national, to, to rather you are a nat naturalized South African yes. uh, who still celebrates his uh, uh, Lesotho nationality, whom mm. you are, you know, a, 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 the type of 
of South African, truly, that I am always happy to celebrate on this on this show. So I appreciate it. Uh, your knowledge of the inner workings of this country are actually incredible. I think uh, you should document them into a, a memoir. <laughs> well, that, that, that's going to happen uh, with the professor of practice at UJ now. Oh, yes. yes because I'm going to allocate a lot of time to that. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. No, it, it's, it's time. Yes, thank yeah. you very much. No, thank again. you very much. I appreciate it. King, King David Studio Podcast.